is an emergency! I need something! Something evil! Yeah, all right. The next day, Snow White had just finished her chores when a little old woman popped out of nowhere and said, you my lady! I'm but a poor peddler woman selling shoes door to door! Shoes? Oh, I don't have much money. They're on sale! They're so pretty and just your size! You deserve a treat! Well, I guess I could just take a look. Try them on! These are beautiful! I don't think I can afford them. No, they're free. <laughs> free? Why? Hmm, that sounds suspicious. Snow White started to go after the old woman to insist on paying her, only to realize... I'm stuck. What? No, no, I'm turning to stone. Why? Help, help, help. Oh no, Snow White had become a statue from head to toe. She didn't even know what you and I know, that the old woman had really been... Hi there, it's time for story time at Cool School. I'm Miss Booksy. Today we're reading Snow White. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Well, that's my nickname. My real name is Margaret Katrine Simone Anna von Kluster Stadenstank. Yeah, so most people just called her Snow White and pretty much everyone agreed that Snow White was the coolest girl around. She was funny. And then I said, that's not a yo-yo, it's a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> she was smart. A-N-I-S-M. And that's how you spell anti-disestablishmentarianism. And best of all, she was kind to every creature on earth. Oh, that is so nice. She was even kind to her stepmother, Katrine Francesca Karina Amelia Anastasia von Kleschberg-Dottenstonk but you can call her the evil queen for sure. As you might guess, the evil queen was not nice at all. It's like she only cares about herself. Yes, that was the problem. The queen did not care for anyone other than herself, and she cared for herself way too much. She even traveled all the way to Grim Forest, where the witches live, just to buy a magic mirror that would tell her how great she was. Oh, that's so not cool. This one is real nice. It'll tell you how wonderful you are. Error, error. Oh! Never mind, that one's no good. Okay, now this magic mirror is top of the line. You're gonna love it. Honestly, I'm getting some mean vibes from you. Ugh, next. Uh, okay, uh, this one. This is a great magic mirror. Go ahead, ask it. Excuse me, Mr. Mirror. No, 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 no. You gotta say, mirror, mirror on the wall. It likes that. All right. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the most amazing person of all? You are my queen. You are the most amazing person of all. You're the best. Aha, I'll take it. Oh man, Snow White's stepmother loved that mirror. She would ask it like a dozen times a day if she was still the most amazing person in all the land. Will you pass the gravy, please? Hold on, hold on. Mirror, mirror, on the wall. It's your turn. Yes, yes, one moment. Mirror, mirror, on the wall. This again. Mirror, mirror, on the wall. Who I'm trying the to sleep. Of all? So yeah, the mirror was pretty annoying. The queen loved giving Snow White chores, as evil queens tend to do. So one day she was cleaning the evil queen's bedroom. She was just about finished when she noticed some schmutz on the magic mirror. I'm definitely not allowed to touch the mirror, but she did say the room had better be spotless. I'd hate to make her mad. Snow White reached out to dust the mirror and... <gasps> it's you! What? You are the most amazing person in the land. Why, thank you, but don't say that. The queen will get, like, really mad. Ugh, she is so mean. But I can see that you have a good heart. <laughs> Are you actually just an x-ray machine? <laughs> no, I mean you have a good soul. Aw, that's so sweet. The queen has a rotten soul, by the way. Well, thanks for the compliment, but you really must keep telling her that she's the best. It's dangerous to make her mad. Promise? Okay. Long story short, the mirror did not keep his promise for long. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the most amazing person of all? You, my lady, are an amazing person. 
Of all? Yeah, sure. Of all. Say it then. Say the whole thing. Uh, I meant to say that you, my queen, are the most amazing person of all. Good, just checking. Uh... What was that? Nothing, nothing, nothing. It sounded like something. It's just that Snow White may be more amazing. But the queen didn't scream or break things, and she didn't cry. She was just very quiet. That's not good, kids. When the evil queen gets quiet, it means she's really, 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 really mad. And like Snow White said, that can be very dangerous. This is kind of spooky. Let's keep reading. Chapter two, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Yep, she looks pretty mad. I will get rid of Snow White. That sounds bad. Poor Snow White, she didn't do anything. Yeah, I was just minding my own business. The evil queen tried all kinds of different ways to get rid of the princess. She locked me out. Oh, she tried to mail me to Alaska. She even tried to send me away in a hot air balloon. Wow, that is so mean. You might be wondering why my dad didn't step in and do anything. Well, he was away on king business at the semi-annual royal symposium. That's where natural born kings and queens go to learn royal stuff, like how to balance giant crowns on their heads and how to wave at a parade. So I was on my own. The queen was getting frustrated. She couldn't get rid of Snow White. She finally decided to go back to the witches of the Grim Forest. Surely they could get the job done. Oh, it's you again. Welcome back. I need a curse to get rid of a princess. Oh, goody. I just love those curses. What do you need? A hundred years sleep? Make her lose her singing voice? Ooh, maybe we turn her into a frog. I just want her to go away forever. Ooh, I see. A one-way ticket. Exactly. Uh-oh. This doesn't sound good. Well, my sister is a travel agent. We can send her to China. I was thinking something a little more permanent. Okay, okay. Well, how about a classic de-atomizer? What is that? I don't know, but it sounds cool, right? Can't you just do something, I don't know, witchy? Oh, sure, that's easy. Here's what you need. A bubbling cauldron, a rose, Ouch! watch out for the thorns, the tooth of a shark, eee! a rotten egg, gross, a picture of Santa Claus, um, random, and a lock of Snow White's hair. And check. Mix it all together and say these words. Mecca like a ding dong, cherry chicken ping pong, Snow White, why don't you just disappear already? Mecca like a ding dong, cherry chicken ping pong, Snow White, why don't you just disappear already? And just like that, Snow White disappeared. Didn't think it would work, did you? Yeah, neither did I. Oh no, I hope she's okay. But here's the thing, boys and girls. People don't really disappear. They just appear somewhere else. And that's what happened to Snow White. She appeared in another fairy tale. Whoa, where am I? This isn't our kingdom. Hey, I think that's Cinderella. How'd I get into her storyline? Oh, maybe her fairy godmother can help me get home. Did somebody say fairy godmother? I did. Do you want to go to the ball too? I can let you go. But you can't win the heart of the prince. I already promised that to my goddaughter, Cinderella. That's okay, I don't need a prince. I just want to go home. Oh, gotcha. And with a wave of her wand, Cinderella's fairy godmother sent Snow White back home. Whoa. Yay, magic to the rescue. And at the very same moment, the evil queen was asking the magic mirror if she was the most amazing person in all the land. Uh, no, it's still Snow White. What? I got rid of her. It should be me. This is awkward. Oh, I'll get her. And this time, I'll make sure she never comes back. I've got a wicked good plan. <laughs> I think you have something in your teeth. Oh, be quiet. Uh-oh, she better watch out. Let's keep reading. Chapter three, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. The evil queen had just discovered that Snow White was back and she was not happy. For revenge, she gave Snow White an endless list of chores to do. I had to clip her toenails. Ugh. I had to brush her cat's teeth. 
And as always, I had to clean her room, which she had left super messy on purpose. I mean, really, who leaves a half a meatloaf under the bed? Gross. Wow, that is so mean. Hey there, how's it going? Oh, you scared me. Sorry, I hope the queen's not being too mean. She's a real piece of work. Yeah, you think deep down maybe she's actually nice? Uh, I don't think so. She's pretty bad. I bet she was a really nice kid. And then something terrible happened, like a wizard cast a spell on her that made her bad. Not exactly. Or maybe she was attacked by a two-headed fire-breathing dragon, and she just hasn't been the same since. Or, or, or maybe she was tricked by a boy who said he was a charming prince, but then he turned out to be a scaly lizard. And ever since then, she's just too sad to be nice. Um, nope. I don't think so. Surely she hasn't always been evil. I'm an all-knowing mirror. Trust me, she's been bad since day one. That is so not cool. She drew angry frowny faces on all her sister's dolls. She cut her brother's hair, and not in a good way. She scribbled all over her family photos. She even put mustard in her mom's shampoo bottle. Yes, indeed. She is one bad apple. Well, if she's always been bad, then how come my dad wanted to marry her? She tricked him. Before your soon-to-be stepmother moved to town, she paid a little visit to the witches in the Grim Forest. Welcome to ye old witchcraft and novelty shop. What can I do for ya? I want to be queen. Hmm, I don't have any crowns, but I could sell you this t-shirt that says, I'm the queen, gotta love me. <gasps> That's it! I need to make the king fall in love with me. I need a potion, a love potion. Ooh, good idea. The witch sold her a magic love potion that would make a guy fall totally head over heels in love with her. Whoa, I'm totally head over heels in love with you. Will you marry me? Oh, now I get it. Unfortunately, that was my dad. And that's how she became the queen, and worst of all, my stepmother. Even back then, she didn't like me. Ugh! Seriously, who doesn't like babies? Hey, do you think the spell could be broken? That would take some very serious magic. Even the witches of the Grim Forest have trouble reversing spells. Wait, she's coming! How do you know? How many times do I have to tell you? I'm an all-knowing mirror. I know everything. Did I hear you talking to someone? Yeah, um, I, 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 I talk to myself when I'm cleaning. <laughs> really? What about? Well, I was just talking to myself about the weather. Yeah, <laughs> beautiful day, isn't it? Oh, I, I guess so. Now get back to work. Whew, that was a close one. That was close. Yeah, if she catches me talking to you, she'll lose it. <gasps> Uh-oh. What? Uh-oh is right, kids. The evil queen was listening at the door. Total fake out. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Tomorrow I'm sending you to the Grim Forest to return this defective mirror. I'm sure you'll both have a lovely time. Hmm, that sounds suspicious. Let's check in with Snow White for a super fun countdown. Hi kids, Snow White here, you know, from Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. As you know, my story has lots of magic potions and spells. Some of them I don't like. For example, the one that turns me into stone. <laughs> but I was a big fan of the one that brought me back to life. Anyways, let's do a countdown of my favorite spells featuring my special guest. Wait, what's your name? Schlartzblugel. Really? Your parents named you Schlartzblugel? Well, it was either that or John. You can just call me the Witch of Grim Forest. Deal. So we're doing a countdown of my top favorite spells. You ready? A Schlartzblugel is always ready. Okay, coming in at number three in my top three fave spells, drum roll, levitation. AKA floating, definitely a good pick. Haha, <laughs> look at her go. Awesome. Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, you can let me down now. Ouchie. Oops. <gasps> Sorry. Moving on, favorite spell numero dos, invisibility. Here we go, 
Add one eye of Newt, two shakes of a ram's tail, and the hair of a kimono dragon. I think it's Komodo. Komodo, Komodo, potato, potato. Anyway, mix that all up, and invisibility, illity, boo! Um, you were supposed to make me invisible? Ow! Ooh, watch it! Ow, you stepped on my toe. Oh, well, I didn't see you there. Okay, so that one needs some work. Ready for number three? Yep. And finally, my number one favorite spell of all time, this one. donkey list ronky list do Hee-haw. <laughs> the one that turns the evil queen into a donkey. Figures, that's the one that works. <laughs> Yay. And those are my top three favorite spells of all time. Hee-haw. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep reading. Chapter four, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Wake up. What time is it? It's time to go to the Grim Forest. <laughs> he is the mirror. What happened to it? It's all smashed. See, I told you it was defective. See ya. She'll find her way into the forest, but she'll never find her way out. <laughs> what? No. That can't be. Okay, this is only extremely very scary. No big deal. I wish the queen hadn't busted the mirror. He would be good company about now. Ugh, and these directions. Walk backwards down the dragon's path? Make a left at the gargoyles. A backwards left or a frontwards left? It's that way. Thanks. Then turn around three times at the Troll's Bridge. <gasps> hey there, my sweet. Ah, this is scary. I'm not your sweet, you troll. Sorry, I don't get out much. Then hop on one foot. Why? Hop on one foot past the Wicked War's warehouse. And so the wishes shop should be? Yoo-hoo, right here. You looking for me? Yeah. How'd you know? Oh, just witch's intuition. That means I'm a really good guesser. Come inside. So my stepmom wants to return this mirror. Oh, this mirror is very smart. Top of the line. Or at least it was. Yeah, I think the queen had a temper tantrum. <laughs> I remember her. Ugh, she's a doozy. Tell me about it. <laughs> This mirror was perfect for her. He knows when to tell a little white lie. Oh, like telling her she's the most amazing in the land? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a fib if I ever heard one. Hey, think we could just fix the mirror? I was starting to like him, and I have a feeling I'm going to need his all-knowing powers. <laughs> all-knowing is good. We'll just put a new face on him, new frame, and boom! Looks brand new. <gasps> That's amazing! Awesome! Need anything else? Snake tooth? Lucky pigtail? Lotto tickets? Actually, can you reverse a love spell? No way, I don't mess with love spells anymore. Legal reasons. Snow White said goodbye to the witch and began her journey out of the Grim Forest. Why, hello there. Hi. <laughs> Maybe the Grim Forest isn't so bad. Okay, so to get back, I just have to reverse the directions. <laughs> Hey, where's the Wicked Wart's warehouse? Or the Troll Bridge? It's getting dark, and I'm lost. Wait, I know. The mirror will know how to get out. Um, hello, Mr. Mirror? Where's the on switch? Snow White tried everything she could think of to get the mirror to work. She tried voice command. Mirror, activate. She tried shaking it. She tried smacking it. Finally, she tried yelling at no one in particular. Why? Um, excuse me, ma'am. Ah! Sorry, didn't mean to frighten you. Are you okay? I'm lost, and it's dark, and this mirror is supposed to know everything, and it won't turn on. And I'm hungry, and I'm scared, and... Who are you? I'm the professor. You must be smart. Do you know the way out of this forest? I need to get back to my kingdom. Yep. Follow me. Okay. 
The professor led Snow White out of the grim forest, past the Wicked Ward's warehouse, the Troll Bridge, the Gargoyles, the Dragon's Path, all the way to where Snow White had began. Thank you so much, Professor. <laughs> You're welcome. I hope to see you again one day. Aw, that is so nice. I don't know if I'll be going back into the Grim Forest anytime soon, but if I do, I'll look for ya. They said their goodbyes, and Snow White went inside the palace to give her stepmother the mirror. You're back? I mean, um, you're, you're back. How lovely. And I brought you a new mirror. <laughs> I don't know how to turn it on, though. It needs batteries. Duh. Oh. <laughs> well, good night. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the most amazing person of all? You better say me. It's you, my queen. Hmm, you sound the same as my old mirror, the one I destroyed. All magic mirrors have this voice now. It's factory issue. Don't worry, my queen. That old mirror is history. Did you just wink? Uh, no, just something in my eye. Kids, what do you think is gonna happen next? Let's keep reading. Chapter five, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. The queen was not happy with Snow White's return. Hi, I'm Snow White and I'm so cool. Blech, it's time to get rid of her once and for all. Uh-oh, she better watch out. Uh-oh. What did you say? I said uh-oh because, um, I haven't told you how awesome you look today, have I? Silly me. You look good, girlfriend. Oh, thank you. There you go, Mr. Squirrel. Keep the cast on for six weeks and don't get it wet. <laughs> He's totally gonna get it wet. Hey there, Snow White. Let's pause for a second. That was Shep Huntsman. A lot of people just called him the Huntsman because he was actually the official hunter for the king. Okay, let's continue with the story. Hi, Shep. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> oh, you know, just hanging out. Cool. <laughs> Sorry, let's pause again. Snow White had a little bit of a crush on the Huntsman. Oh, so cute. What? He's really nice, and he taught me all kinds of wilderness survival skills. He taught me how to call a turkey. Hello, can I please speak to Mr. Turkey? No, like this. And how to make s'mores. Are they done yet? Are they done yet? Are they done yet? He even taught me what to do if I encountered an angry fire-breathing dragon. <gasps> Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? It's you, it's you, oh. Anyway, what I mean is he's just cool, <laughs> whatever. So, how's it going? Oh, wait, I already asked you that, didn't I? Yoo-hoo, huntsman boy, I need to speak to you. Okay, your highness, be right there. No, now, I mean, please. <laughs> You better go. She's been super testy lately. Okay. See you later. See ya. <laughs> Huntsman boy, I need you to do a job for me. Sure, your highness. I need you to take Snow White out. On a date? A date? With her? Ugh, you have no taste. No, I need you to take Snow White deep into the forest and sell her to the wizard. I don't get it. There's nothing to get. You take her into the woods, you sell her to the weird wizard who will turn her into a frog or something, and then you bring me the money. Oh no. Why do you want the wizard to turn her into a frog? I don't care if it's a frog or a rock or a bobblehead toy. I just want her gone. I don't think I can do this. It's not nice. Ugh. If you don't do it, I will. And trust me, that's much worse for pretty little Snow White. Why? She's so sweet. That's exactly why. Now run along. You have work to do. This is bad. I mean, you look rad. The huntsman was very upset. He went down to sit by the koi pond. That's where he liked to do his serious thinking. I really like Snow White. I couldn't do anything to hurt her. What am I supposed to do? What would you do if you were there? Meanwhile, Snow White went upstairs to do her chores and talk to her friend, the mirror. Hey, how are ya? The queen is making the huntsman take you out. On a date? No, out in the forest where he's gonna sell you to the wizard. The wizard? He turns people into frogs. Wait, Chef Huntsman would never do that to me. 
The queen said, if he doesn't, she'll do worse. I think you should run away from the kingdom. This is my home. I'm the princess. It's not safe for you here. You'll find happiness in the forest. Trust me. Snow White knew the mirror wouldn't lie to her, so she went to her room to pack all her prized possessions. Why won't you fit? <sighs> You're probably better off here anyway, Teddy. I'll miss you. And I'll miss you too, Lamb. <laughs> and I'll miss you, dollhouse with a real elevator and a tiny ice cream machine. <gasps> and you, my beautiful dresses. <sighs> I'm going to miss being a princess, but I will be brave. And I will go out into the forest and I will survive. One day, I will return. Not as a princess, but as a queen. Snap girl, that was fierce. And so Snow White set off to find the huntsmen and begin their journey. She was ready for her new adventure. Ooh, this is so exciting. Let's keep reading. Chapter six, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Snow White and the huntsmen set off for their journey into the grim forest. It was a little awkward for a few reasons. One, she totally knew he was supposed to sell her to the wizard. Two, he didn't know that she knew that he was supposed to sell her to the wizard. And he was nervous. And three, they were always a little awkward around each other anyway because that's just how it is sometimes. When you kind of like somebody and you hope they like you back. So, uh, the sky is blue. Uh, uh I mean, a uh, nice day, right? Yeah. <laughs> Perfect day for a stroll. Yeah, just a nice stroll through a spooky forest. Well, that was weird. Look. I know the queen told you to get rid of me. You do? I won't sell you to the wizard, I promise. Psh, like I was gonna let you. What are we gonna do? I packed some basic survival items. Jerky, trail mix, water, jelly beans, first aid kit, oh, and I packed a teeny tiny teddy bear. <laughs> I couldn't get the big one to fit in my bag. I can't just leave you out here. I'll be okay. You taught me all kinds of survival skills. Why don't I stay here with you? Are you nuts? If you stay, then the queen will come looking for both of us. Yeah, that would be bad. I'll be all right. The queen's magic mirror told me so. Come visit me sometime? Of course. Here, take my camping toolkit. It's got all kinds of handy stuff, even fingernail clippers. Oh yeah, I guess there's no place for a Manny Petty out here. Whatever, <laughs> I'll be fine. I better go. Don't want to make the queen mad. See ya, Snow White. See ya, Shep Huntsman. And that's how Snow White began her first day as a non-princess, stranded in the woods with a small teddy bear and a pair of fingernail clippers. Well, I better start setting up camp. As Snow White began to work on her new dwelling, the Huntsman practiced his spiel for the queen. It had to be perfect. Why, yes, your highness. I definitely sold Snow White to the wizard. He said he'd turn her into a frog in no time. Yes, ma'am. I sold her for, oh no. If I sold the princess, then I should have money. I don't have any money. How are they ever gonna get out of this one? The huntsman checked his pockets for loose change. Nope. He looked in his sock. Nada. He checked his fanny pack where he kept important things like his Phillips head screwdriver and chewing gum. Zip, zilch, zero. Wait, I know, to the koi pond. That's where I toss in my coins and make wishes. I wish I could get a puppy. I wish I could fly. I wish I could grow a mustache. I wish I had a hundred wishes. There must be like a million dollars in there by now. Hey, I never did get that puppy or that mustache. That's it, I'm taking my wishes back. Meanwhile, in Grim Forest, Snow White had just finished setting up her new, um, apartment? Perfect, it's shabby chic. <laughs> oh man. Okay, third time's a charm. Excuse me, Snow White? Professor, boy am I glad to see you. What are you doing here? I live here now. <laughs> We're neighbors. Great, there goes the neighborhood. Who's your friend? That's Sassy McSassy Pants. That's your name? I love it. <laughs> OMG, I love it. My real name is Sasper. It's short for exasperation. No, it isn't. Snow White, you can't live out here like this. Sure I can. I'm not a princess anymore. I'm just a regular girl. Regular girls don't live under a pile of sticks in Grim Forest. Come on, you're moving in with us. No. Hush, Sasper. Oh, I shouldn't intrude. 
No, she shouldn't. Nonsense. Let's go. Snow White grabbed her bag and followed the professor and Sasper to their little cottage in the woods. She was so excited. I've never had roommates before. <laughs> this is going to be so much fun. Back at the kingdom, the huntsman had just gathered enough coins and was off to see the queen. Your majesty. Why are you all wet? Uh, it's raining. Uh, in the woods. It was raining in the woods. Anyway, here's your money. You sold Snow White to the wizard? Yup. He said he was definitely going to turn her into a frog. A frog? Are you sure? Yes, ma'am. You'll never see Snow White again. Well, you might see her as a frog, but it would be hard to tell it's her. Unless maybe she's wearing little yellow frog pants or something. How cute! Now please leave. Okay, your highness. See you later. Now, Muir, tell me, who is the most awesome and wonderful and dazzling person in all the land? Why, it's you, my queen. Obviously. Who else would it be? Snow White? Please, give me a break. As if. Psst. Okay, that's enough. Don't overdo it. <laughs> that was so funny. That night, everyone went to bed feeling pretty happy. The huntsman was glad he didn't have to sell Snow White to the bad wizard. The queen felt confident that she was the best thing since sliced bread. And Snow White was excited to start this new chapter in her life with her new cool roommates. I'm gonna need a bigger bed. Wow, this is so fun. Let's keep reading. Chapter seven, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Have you guys been there? Not long. You drool when you sleep. We're just so excited. We've never had a princess for a roommate, or any roommate at all, except for all of us, of course. And we used to have a dog. Does that count? I think so. Do you want breakfast? Snacky made pancakes. They're shaped like animals. They're the best. You're so perky for so early in the morning. <laughs> What's your name? Kitty. Cute. You fell asleep as soon as you walked in the door yesterday. They didn't get a chance to introduce themselves. I was pooped. <laughs> Leaving your kingdom and roughing it in the woods is exhausting. <laughs> okay, let's do names. Of course I know you, Professor. <laughs> and now you know me and Sassy. I'm Snacky. He's the one who makes the pancakes. I'm the one who makes everything around here. Any favorite foods? Yes, I like corn on the cob and white cheddar cheese puffs and snow cones and club sandwiches. Oh, hold the mayo though. <laughs> Got it. I'm sloppy. I see. <laughs> I'm clumsy. That's just my nickname, though. I'm actually quite graceful. Whoa, 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 whoa! Oh, I'm okay. <laughs> Those dwarves are so funny. Is that everyone? Don't forget me. I'm Tiny. Hi. <laughs> well, I'm pleased to meet all of you. <laughs> so, what do you guys do for fun around here? We work. What? Work's no fun. Unless you get to work in an amusement park. <laughs> That's probably fun. We work in the mines. Oh, diamond mines? No, salt. Oh, and you have fun doing that? Sure, everything's fun when you're with your best pals. What do you do for fun? I dance and sing and go to parties and play with all my animal friends and read and get in snowball fights and fly kites and ride bikes and... Oh, yeah, just to name a few. <laughs> but I'll totally go to work in the mines with you guys. I'm no freeloader. You're much too big to go into the mines. Well, I'll work here then. <laughs> I can clean. I used to clean my stepmother's room all the time. We're not very messy. <laughs> Ooh, that's gotta hurt. Right. <laughs> I'm also pretty good at sewing. <gasps> I can make you guys matching outfits. That okay. would be amazing! Well, then let me at least make some new curtains. There's a lot of bad feng shui around here. Finally, it was settled that Snow White would spruce up the cottage in exchange for free room and board. She did other little things too, like cut their hair and make a new chef's hat for Snacky. Oh, and she changed all the light bulbs, which was a huge help. Snow White kept so busy that she didn't even have time to miss home. Actually, speaking of home, the evil queen was having a ball without Snow White around. She brought the mirror with her everywhere and showed everyone how it would say that she was the most awesome person in all the land. Ask the mirror if you're the most awesome person. Okay, okay, I'll ask. <laughs> 
mirror, mirror in my hand, who's the most awesome person in the land? Is it this guy? No. Is it her? Wow, that is so mean. It's you, queen. You are so awesome. Pretty rude, though, if you ask me. Hear that? I'm the most awesome person in the land. Three cheers for me. Oh, yay. Let's have a party in my honor. And I'll save my first dance for you, Mr. Huntsman. I, uh, actually can't. I'm busy. Busy? Too busy to attend a party of the queen? What are you doing that's so important? I, uh, have to wash my hair. Yeah, that's it. Okay, bye. The queen knew he was telling her a lie, but she didn't know why. She watched the huntsman from her window as he walked out of the palace and straight toward... Grim Forest? Suspicious. I'll have to follow him and find out what he's up to. Uh-oh. He better watch out. Dun, dun, dun! What was that? Nothing. The queen followed the huntsman into the woods. Who's there? What was that? Is someone there? Finally, they stopped. Hey there. Snow White! Oh no, this doesn't look good. Let's keep reading. Chapter eight, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. The queen watched as Snow White and the huntsman talked and laughed. That rotten huntsman was supposed to get rid of her! He was supposed to take her to the wicked wizard and have her turned into a frog! How hard is that? Oh no, I hope they'll be okay. Well, thanks for stopping by. Sure thing. Need anything special for next time? Yes, Snacky asked if you could bring him some marshmallows and graham crackers. We're gonna make s'mores. Awesome, will do. Bye, Snow White. Bye, Chef! And please be careful. If the queen finds out, she'll be very angry and we're done for. Yes, that would be bad, wouldn't it, princess? The queen rushed over to the witch's shop and barged right in. Hey, ever hear a knocking? This is an emergency! I need something! Something evil. Yeah, all right. The next day, Snow White had just finished her chores when a little old woman popped out of nowhere and said, you my lady! I'm but a poor peddler woman selling shoes door to door! Shoes? Oh, I don't have much money. They're on sale! They're so pretty! And just your size! You deserve a treat! Well, I guess I could just take a look. Try them on! These are beautiful! I don't think I can afford them. No, they're free. <laughs> free? Why? Hmm, that sounds suspicious. Snow White started to go after the old woman to insist on paying her, only to realize... I'm stuck. What? No, no, I'm turning to stone. Why? Help, help, help. Oh no, Snow White had become a statue from head to toe. She didn't even know what you and I know, that the old woman had really been the evil queen. Goodbye forever, Snow White. <laughs> what? No, that can't be. The queen went back to her kingdom, happy to be rid of Snow White. She marched straight towards the magic mirror. Question, why did you say I was the most awesome person in all the land when we both know you favor Snow White? But Snow White is gone, my queen. She is now. But since you're such a wise, all-knowing mirror, you must have known she's been in the grim forest all this time. Oh, see, when you said in all the land, I thought you meant around here, like in this kingdom. I didn't know you were counting grim forest. My bad. Well, it doesn't matter. She's gone forever this time, and you better watch your back. Mm -hmm. The evil queen was also quite angry with the huntsman. She put him in jail and threw away the key. Wait, I didn't have dinner yet. Aw, oh, man. Meanwhile, back at Grim Forest, the dwarves were just coming back from work. What's that? Looks like a statue. It looks like Snow White. Cool. I want a statue that looks like me. Snow White, Snow White, come out here. There's a statue and it looks just like you. Wait, I think this is Snow White. It must be an evil curse from that evil queen. She's so evil. 
The dwarves were so upset. They didn't know how to reverse a curse, and they didn't know whether Snow White could think or feel in there, or if she truly was made of stone. What if she's scared? What if she gets cold? We have to move her inside. Those dwarves are so helpful. The dwarves tried with all their might, but they couldn't move Snow White. Professor, do you know any ways to reverse a spell? Well, let's see. Maybe she could kiss a frog. Here! <laughs> Why do you have a frog in your pocket? Why not? It's cute! Okay, let's reverse this spell. Maybe say some magic words! Alakazam! Abracadabra! Kalamazoo! Bless you! It's no use! We don't know magic! We could go to a witch. But the witches live in the scary part of the forest! We'll just have to be brave. Yes! We have to save our friend! The professor and Giddy set off to find a witch to reverse the spell, while the rest of the gang stood watch to guard and protect Snow White. Ah! Shoo, go away. What if we can't reverse the spell and Snow White is a statue forever? Don't worry, Tiny, we'll have a happy ending. I just know it! What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's keep reading. Chapter nine, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Professor and Giddy were on their way to find a way to save their friend Snow White, bravely trekking through the grim forest. Ah! 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 Okay, well, at least they were trying to be brave. But hey, at least they were willing to face their fears and help a friend, right? <laughs> that was hilarious. The two finally found what they were looking for. Ye old magic shop. Hello, hi, ding, 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 ding. Ah! I mean, hello, I'm Giddy. Good for you. And I'm the professor. We need to reverse an evil spell. What kind of spell? Our friend was turned to stone! That worked? Wow. Uh, alright, I mean, uh, let's see what I have in the antidote department. That means stuff that undoes bad stuff. But you're a professor, so you probably already knew that. Yes, I did! I didn't! I love learning new words! Ah, here we are. Now we just toss it in the cauldron... And... While Giddy, Professor, and the Witch mixed up the antidote, or stuff that undoes bad stuff, the evil queen was back at her castle, thinking, which is never a good thing. Snow White's turned to stone, but why don't I feel any better? I should be glowing, relaxed, happy. Mirror, do I look happy to you? Uh, you look... yeah. Look at that smile. No, this is no good. How do I know some dingbat isn't gonna stumble along and reverse the spell? I'm sure it's fine. Nope, I'm going back to take the statue. Oh no. The evil queen strikes again. Wake up guys, it's time to save Snow White. We have the antsy goat. That means stuff that undoes bad stuff. Right, Professor? Something like that, but yes. Guys, we can reverse the spell. Wait, where's Snow White? Snow White! Snow White, where are you? Guys, she's a statue. She can't answer you. Oh, right! Statues can't talk? I got it! Snow White, blink twice if you can hear us. Gee, great plan. Well, if you had been guarding her, she wouldn't be lost. Me? I wasn't the only one. What about you? Oh, pretty please stop fighting. I don't like it. Giddy's right. We have to work together. It's no use. She's either been stolen. Statue net. Or maybe she came back to life and she left. No, she wouldn't just leave like that. I bet the evil queen took her. Of course. Well, we have to go find her. I love it! Okay, team name. How about the seven cool dudes? Blech. I'll consider that a yes. It was official. The seven cool dudes were on their way to save Snow White. Ooh, this is so exciting. Let's keep reading. Chapter 10, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Well, there's the castle. Now what? We storm the gates and find Snow White. Wait, there's Snow White now. I have the witch's antidote. We'll just go up and turn her back to her old self. Hey, Professor, over here. Hey, it's the Huntsman. Why are you in jail? The queen locked me up for trying to help Snow White. I don't know what you're planning to do, but be careful. Uh-oh, we came to help Snow White. Huh? I thought Snow White was with you guys. She's here? Um, 
Oh, that's just a statue. The queen put it there to torment me. Actually, we think that's the real Snow White. No! We're not sure, but we think so. But we have a potion from a witch that could change your back. Well, what are you standing here talking to me for? Go save Snow White. But the huntsman said that just a wee bit too loudly, and yep, you guessed it. Suddenly, there was the evil queen standing right between the dwarves and Snow White. Uh-oh, they better watch out. Save Snow White? Never! We will save her! Aw, you seem so upset. How sad would you be if I smashed that statue into a thousand pieces? No! no! Watch me! Okay, guys, it's time to fight back. But I'm a leopard, not a fighter! Today, we're all fighters. Now let's get that evil queen. The dwarves grabbed the queen's legs and stopped her in her tracks. Get off me! Get off! Not until Snow White lives and you're gone forever! The queen tried to move forward, but it was no use. But then she spotted the witch's spell-reversing potion in the professor's hand. Give me that! No way! Got it! <laughs> now get off me! Then the professor had an idea. You want us to let go of you? Yes! Let go! Okay! Let go, guys! But luck would have it that the evil queen dropped the antidote and it fell right smack dab on Snow White's head. Whew, that was a close one. It doesn't work! Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> What's everybody crying about? And why are all these pigeons on me? Shoot, birds, shoot! Snow White, you're alive! Of course I'm alive, why wouldn't I be? But wait, why am I back at the castle? And Shep, why are you in jail? The evil queen put me here. No, where is she? Over there! Owie. I'm confused. It's a long story. I'll tell it, I love long stories. I'm all ears, but first we gotta do two things. Let's bust Shep out of jail and put that bad apple in his place. Yeah! No! Sorry, majority rules, evil queen drools. <laughs> that rhymed! Yay! Once the evil queen was locked away in jail, Shep, the dwarves, and Snow White all kicked back and relaxed, happy as could be. Wait, no, there was one thing missing. Snow White, my darling daughter. Dad! That's right. Remember back in chapter two when I told you that Snow White's dad was away at the semi-annual royal symposium? You know, the place where kings and queens go to learn royal stuff? Well, he was back. Yay, I'm so happy. Dad, I missed you. Where's the queen? Long story. Oh, yippee! Let me tell it. I love long stories. Now, how's that for a happy ending? <laughs> wow, that was so much fun. I just love happy endings. Man, oh man, do I love this time of year. There's pumpkins and presents and sweater weather and so many treats. Someone else who loves the holiday season is one of our favorite princesses, Snow White. She's making an epic bash for a holiday feast. Want to see? Come on, check it out. Hi, guys. Well, I just love the holidays. There are so many exciting things, so much to be grateful for, and of course, so many delicious feasts to be had. I'm going to be making a holiday feast for the seven dwarves and a few extra friends. First, I'm making some scrumptious appetizers. Whoa, this looks awesome! I made cheese and crackers, dip, a jello mold, a fruit platter, some weird green thingy. They're gonna love it! Next, I have to decorate this house. It looks so dull. I gotta add some color. Whoa, this looks so awesome, so festive. This is my festive dance. Okay, I don't think it would be a true holiday feast without a roast turkey. I'm just gonna add some potatoes and carrots and onions. Ew! Don't worry, kids, only a little bit of onions. <laughs> Throw on some seasoning. Mmm, it smells so good. And into the oven it goes. One major tip for making a giant holiday feast, get some help. I'm lucky because I live in this house with seven little dudes and they're always willing to help me out. Everybody gets a job. Giddy, 
You wash the dishes. Yay, I'm so excited to do anything to help. Professor, you come up with a game we can play with all the guests. You got it. Sassy and Snacky, here are all the ingredients to chocolate chip cookies. Get on it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, these are going to be so good. Sloppy, clean up the mess around here. And Clumsy, you may just want to stay put and cheer us on. I don't want you knocking into something and getting hurt. Okay, Snow White. And Tiny, come here. I'm going to lift you up so that you can dust off this top shelf. It's too high for me. I can't reach. Whee! This is fun. Hello again. And it wouldn't be a holiday feast without getting all dolled up. So I'm gonna wear my favorite outfit. So cute! I just love dressing up. Anyone else? Let me know in the comments if you love to wear a party dress or a suit or a sweater or whatever. <laughs> oh, that must be the guests at the door. Time to party! Holiday feast begins now. Let's dance. Let's limbo! Let's sing karaoke! Oh. Present time! Mmm, chocolate fondue! So that's it, you guys. I hope you enjoyed checking out the awesome holiday feast I made with my friends. Hello there, Ella. Do you like candy? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> hey! Too late. You snooze, you lose. And those were my two new stepsisters. Gritzel and Unga. They never even bothered pretending to be nice. Anyway, my dad was duped, and suddenly I had a new family. Whenever my dad was away, the step monsters would treat me like a servant. I did the sweeping, I did the windows, I did the vacuuming! And being big old meanies, Gritzel and Unga constantly made messes on purpose. Oops. I cleaned nonstop, day in and day out. And I was a mess, always covered in dust and grime, which led to me getting a new nickname. Ew, Ella, you're all covered in cinders from the chimney. Maybe we should call you Cinder Ella. Cinder Ella. Hi, kids. I'm Miss Booksy, and this is story time. Today, we're reading Cinderella. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Ahem, that's not my real name. That's just what my mean stepsisters and stepmother call me. <laughs> my real name is Ella. Actually, let's begin my story there. When I was Ella and everything was nice and peaceful and lovely. I was an only child, but I had a ton of pets. So when I was little, I was never, ever lonely. Two cats, Sir Bonkers and Lady Blinky, a dog named Patches, a hamster named Spinner, a tortoise named Fudge, a lizard named a lizard bit, a pony named Pegasus, not a real Pegasus, but that would be really cool, <laughs> and a goldfish named Goldie. Oh, so cute. Okay, so Goldie wasn't such great company. Moving on. My dad was the greatest dad of all time, seriously. And he told the awesomest bedtime stories ever. And then the big bad wolf said, Little pig, little pig, let me in. And then the little pig squealed, Not by the hair of our chinny chin chins. See, he was really good at doing voices. So let's see, my pets were cool, my dad was the best. Oh, and our town was super neat too. We lived in the kingdom, excuse me, a queendom of Queen Elaine the First. She put on fabulous tea parties and concerts and musicals, like all the time. <laughs> so yeah, things were pretty great, but I must have been cursed by an evil witch or something because one day my dad told me that he was getting married. <gasps> okay. That's not the terrible part. It would have been awesome if you were marrying Queen Elaine or somebody cool like that, but no way. Somehow, he found the meanest lady ever in the history of meanness. Uh-oh, this doesn't sound good. But it wasn't his fault, I guess, because at first she pretended to be so nice. Hello there, Ella. Do you like candy? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> hey! Too late. You snooze, you lose. And those were my two new stepsisters, Gritzel and Unga. They never even bothered pretending to be nice. Anyway, my dad was duped, and suddenly I had a new family. Oh, that's so not cool. 
My stepsisters had a real su casa is mi casa kind of attitude. In other words, they took all my That's stuff. mine! I want it. Mine! Gimme! Okay, I'm all about sharing is caring, guys, but come on, you can't take all my clothes! Here, you can wear this. Then, they said they were scared of all my animals. So scared that my dad had to banish them all to the barn outside. Even a lizard bit, she'll get cold. Too scary. But what about Goldie? Come on, all she does is sit there and go. Take her away. They all have to go. I'm sorry, guys. I'll visit you. Wow, that is so mean. The great animal exodus wasn't the end of it. Whenever my dad was away, the step monsters would treat me like a servant. I did the sweeping. I did the windows. I did the vacuuming. And being big old meanies, Gritzel and Unga constantly made messes on purpose. Oops. I cleaned nonstop, day in and day out. And I was a mess always covered in dust and grime, which led to me getting a new nickname. Ew, Ella, you're all covered in cinders from the chimney. Maybe we should call you Cinder Ella. Cinder Ella. So yeah, this all lasted a few years. Then my dad left for this big fishing trip expedition thingy. That's when my stepmother decided I should move into the barn. It was cold and dark and a little scary. But I had my animals, and that was nice. Aw, plus some field mice. Hi, guys. <laughs> anyway, my dad wouldn't be gone forever, right? He'd come back and see how mean my step family was and give them the boot, right? What would you do if you were there? Let's keep reading. Chapter two, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Life in the barn wasn't so bad. Cinderella had made a nice little room for herself. Being that much closer to the rooster meant I never overslept. And it sure was convenient being able to just roll over and start my chores. <laughs> but I missed my old life, especially my dad. It seems like he had been gone for his fishing trip like forever. Then I heard the awful news. Extra, extra, awful news. Local dad captured by pirates. Oh no, I hope he'll be okay. Yep, my dad had been captured by a gang of pirates. And to make matters worse, my stepmother and stepsisters didn't even seem to care. He'll be fine. Who cares? I can't worry. It gives me wrinkles. Oh, they were the worst. Fine, I'll go find him. Don't be ridiculous. You have to stay here and take care of us. No way. I'm going to go find him and fight the pirates. I'll hire a search party. They'll find him and bring him home. Really? Really. But like, really, really? Really, really, really. Gosh. Can we stop talking about pirates and like get some breakfast? Yeah, really. Cinder, really. <laughs> oh, fine. Hmm, that sounds suspicious. With my dad gone so long, things went from very bad to way worse. My stepmother decided it was time for my stepsisters to get married. And of course, I had to help. There were etiquette lessons. The most difficult task was teaching them how to be not terrible. Would you like to go for a walk? You don't have a carriage. Ew, next. Okay, so maybe don't yell so much. Why? Never mind. It was beginning to feel pretty useless. My stepsisters were just big old meanies. Meanwhile, my dad was still out there somewhere with a crusty old gang of pirates. Actually, that doesn't sound so bad compared to these guys. Good thing I still have you guys. <laughs> Good night, Sir Bonkers. Lady Blinky, Patches, Spinner, Fudge, a Lizard Beth, Pegasus, Goldie. <laughs> Good night to you, Squeakers, Pip and Puff Puff. <laughs> Good night, Mr. Rooster. Shh. Save it for the morning. <laughs> that was so funny. That night, I had a beautiful dream. My dad was home safe and sound. My stepmother and Gritzel and Unga were nowhere in sight. Amazing, I was all dressed up, no more rags. And I had the prettiest slippers. It was almost as if they were made of glass. Ah! <gasps> What's all that racket? Why didn't you wake me, Mr. Rooster? 
We must get to work immediately. This is so exciting. What's going on? The queen is having a ball and we're all invited. Whoa, I just had a dream that I was dressed up in a beautiful gown, <laughs> just like I was going to a royal ball. That's so funny. That is funny. You in a gown. Get it? Because you wear rags. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> Whatever. They're rude. I was used to it. But a royal ball? Now this is exciting. Ooh, this is so exciting. Let's keep reading. Chapter three, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. I have to make a dress and my hair. What am I gonna do with my hair? And I have to prepare some witty banter. I haven't been around people, well, people I actually wanna talk to in forever. <laughs> I hope people still like knock-knock jokes. Those are my specialty. My stepmother had said I couldn't go to the ball. Well, I would just have to find a way, wouldn't I? <laughs> I began preparations in secret. My stepsisters went through dresses like they were going out of style, so I had lots of material to choose from to craft a perfect gown. <laughs> a little satin here, a little silk there, some velvet, pearls, and voila! <laughs> that looks so beautiful. <gasps> the most beautiful dress in the world. Oh. Shoes wouldn't be so easy though. My stepsisters had thrown out all of my shoes back when they first moved in. None of these shoes fit. <laughs> anyway, one day I was cleaning the attic when I found a box that I had never noticed before. <gasps> shoes, these must have belonged to my mom. They were beautiful slippers that looked almost as if they were made of glass, just like in my dream. <gasps> and next to the shoes was the most exquisite necklace I'd ever seen. Everything was coming together perfectly. <gasps> That's amazing. But it's not like the royal ball was the only thing I was thinking about. Curiously, I hadn't heard anything about my dad. You know, the whole being captured by pirates thing. Supposedly my stepmother was on it, but I just wasn't sure I could trust her. So I decided to take matters into my own hands. Harvey Beeswax, private investigator, at your service. Hi, Mr. Beeslax. My dad was captured by a gang of pirates. I need your help. Pirates, eh? Yes, and my stepmother said that she can't find him, but she's done diddly squat. Diddly squat? That's not enough. I know. So, do you think you can find him? It'll be tough, but I'm the best private eye in the city. If anybody can find your pop, it'll be me. Great. I charge three gold bits an hour, plus expenses. Oh. Right, um, money. Yeah, I don't have any of that. Sorry, kid. No money, no detective. What? No, that can't be. Wait, what if I paid you in jewels? Jewels? I like jewels. What do you got? So, I brought my mother's necklace to Harvey Beeswax, private eye. Oh well, at least I still had the dress and shoes. Or so I thought. When I got home, I found this. It's mine. No, mine! Cinderella, who did you make this dress for? Me or Gritzel? Um, it's clearly for me. Blue makes you look like a blueberry. Well, blue makes you look like a, a blue whale. Cinderella, please settle this. I, I, I made it for myself, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Funny joke, right? <laughs> no. Not really. Gee, I can't decide who it would look prettier on. Me, obviously. Uh-uh, me. Oops, I didn't like it anyway. Okay, well, let's see. I had started the day with a lovely ball gown, a diamond necklace, and glass slippers. And suddenly I had no dress, no jewelry. Well, at least I still had the shoes. They didn't fit anyway. Well, back to square one. That's so sad. Let's keep reading. Chapter four, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. It's finally the day of the ball. And I had nothing to wear. What do you think, Pegasus? Could this be shabby chic? <laughs> yeah, you're right, too casual. Cinderella, come here. <laughs> Ugh, gotta get to work. Meanwhile, hmm. No sign of Cinderella's old man yet, but I'll solve this case. I hope they'll be okay. Getting Gritzel and Unga ready was no small task. They required bubble baths, manicures, pedicures, blowouts, 
finally, my stepsisters were ready for the royal ball. You guys look really nice. Um, we know. Okay, well, have a great time. <laughs> Unga, don't yell too much. And Gritzel, remember to say please and thank you. But don't forget to have some fun. That's quite enough talk, Cinderella. Goodbye. I'll be honest, I was kind of sad. I retreated to the barn with some snacks to eat my feelings. I know, it's pretty cliche, but I was sad, okay? That is so sad. And then, I don't know why, but I yelled out, Oh, if I only had a fairy godmother. <laughs> Yoo-hoo! What? Hello! Oh. <coughs> Excuse me, frog on my throat. What's up? Did you find my dad? No, not yet. Like, don't give up, kid. I just came here to scrub for clues. Clues? Here? Yeah, you never know what you might find if you just look. You okay? Me? What? Uh, yeah, I'm definitely not crying or anything. Okay. Well, uh, see ya. He left, and I went back to feeling sorry for myself. Why? Mr. Beeswax? Sorry I'm late, sugar, but better late than never, right? Who are you? Your fairy godmother. I thought that part was pretty obvious. Wow, that is so cool. Whoa, I thought that was just fairy tale stuff. Cool. A lot of people think that, but I'm real. Watch this. Awesome! I know, right? So, how does this work? Do I get like three wishes or something? Three wishes? What do I look like, a genie in a bottle? Oh, so no wishes? Darling, I'm here to make all your wishes come true. But not all at once. It doesn't work that way. Oh. And some of the wishes will be wishes you didn't even know you wished yet. Say what now? I know what's in your heart, sugar. How? Honey, I'm your fairy godmother. It's fairy magic, you see? Oh, that makes sense. All right, so first things first, let's get you ready for the ball. The ball? Yes, I so want to go to the ball. I had a dress and a necklace and shoes, but my stepsisters, they tore everything up. Well, not the necklace. I gave that to Harvey Beeswax, private eye. Long story, but I really, 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 want really... want to go to the ball, yes, I know. And with a wave of my magic wand... Wow, that was so much fun. Let's keep reading. Chapter five, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Cinderella had just been explaining in detail the recent happenings that she had experienced to her fairy godmother. Yes, dear, I know. You want to go to the ball. So as I was saying, with a wave of my magic wand. Oh, yeah. Like, why wouldn't I want to go? Dancing, candy, disco balls, handsome princes, hopefully chocolate milk. I love chocolate milk. Ooh, this is so exciting. OK, hold the phone, honey. We can't have you going to the ball looking like this. Ah, uh, rude. Well, I just mean, you look, uh, like a mess. Yeah, yeah, I got it. You just don't look like a princess, that's all. Okay, listen, fairy GM, I think you need to quit while you're ahead and just help a sister out. Right, so what's your favorite color? Blue, bluish aqua, turquoise, um, aquamarine, bright blue. Okay, all right, any shade of blue, I get it. With the wave of my magic wand. Yeah. And with all my magical powers combined. Yeah. I will give you the most beautiful, flowy, princessy, sparkly, on sale from Black Friday. Huh? Ball gown. Yeah. <laughs> That's so magical. And what do you think, honey? I love it. Hi. Oh, nothing, dear. I'm so excited. The prince is deaf going to want to juju on that beat with me at the ball. <laughs> uh, you won't be dancing with those tootsies. Uh, yeah, I'm due for a mani-pedi soon. Well, stick your hands out and close your eyes, my little ragamuffin love. Boopy boopy blabity boo These are the bomb! 
Oh, oh, hopefully I won't break them. I'm kind of a klutz. Oh, they fit perfect. <laughs> that looks so beautiful. Okay, I better get on my way. Oh wait, pretty sure the castle is like 48 miles away. That would take approximately 864 minutes if I walk, if I hustle. Cinderella, get it together. I'm gonna hook you up. Now go get me a pumpkin, spaghetti squash, any gourd or root vegetable ought to do. Mm, no gourds to speak of, but how about this? My Halloween bucket. Well, let me just put it That'll do, I suppose. Cinderella put the bucket down, and with one more swirl of the magic wand, the bucket became a gorgeous, sparkling carriage. A carriage is kind of like a stroller, but for adults. <laughs> I am gonna look so cool riding up in this thing. <laughs> You're gonna look cool for sure, Cinderella, but you also need to act cool. You simply need to follow my four fabulous formulas for fetching friends at a farty. Excuse me, I mean party. <laughs> that was so funny. Oh yeah, I could use all the help I can get. Step one, always laugh at people's jokes. Or tell your own. Oh, I've been told I have an amazing laugh. Wonderful, let's hear it. <laughs> all right, that's very distinctive. Uh, maybe just take it down a few notches. Okay, whatever. What's next? Step two, find common interests. Cheese puffs? Oh, those are my favorite snack. Snack, jinx, <laughs> same, I love those. See, we're so similar. <laughs> Okay, cheese puffs, got it. Okay, number three, be a dancing queen. Okay, this one is easy. I love dancing. Let me show you how it's done. You go, girl, do your thing. Whew, I was quite the mover and shaker in my day. Oh, this is so fun. Okay, so number four, I'm getting antsy and ready to go. Oh, well, you better get a move on. Um, I'll text you the rest. Sounds great, fairy godmother. <laughs> I'm just gonna be myself and have a blast. Hey, uh, who's driving this thing? My stepmother wouldn't let me go for my driver's license test. I almost forgot. You, over there. And y'all, over here. Well, we're off. <laughs> Thanks so much for everything, fairy. <laughs> you're the bestest in all the land. Well, you're certainly welcome. This is gonna be the best night of my life. Oh no, I forgot to tell her about the midnight thing. Uh-oh, this doesn't sound good. Let's keep reading. Chapter six, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. What is wrong with you? You forgot to tell Cinderella about the midnight rule. What were you thinking? Yoo-hoo! Cinderella! The fairy godmother caught up to the carriage and shouted after Cinderella. But clearly, Cinderella was having so much fun, she didn't even notice. Well, desperate times call for desperate measures. <laughs> ah! Oh! You! Uh, you scared me half to death. <laughs> that was hilarious. Cinderella, you can't go yet. Ah! Fairy, you gotta cut the cord and let me go. I'm a grown woman. No, I mean the spell. Say what now? The spell at midnight. You have to be long gone from the royal ball by then. Uh, I have no intention of leaving when the party is still hopping. No, you absolutely must. No. You have to. No. You have to. Cinderella, listen to me. If you don't, then all this magic will wear off. What? No. That can't be. There's always a catch. But don't worry about it. Go, enjoy yourself. Just keep track of the time. No prob. <laughs> I'll set an alarm on my phone. So Cinderella continued on her journey to the castle, super excited and super nervous to meet the prince. You guys, this is gonna be the best night ever. At the ball, Cinderella is having the time of her life. Woohoo! When suddenly she noticed two very familiar but not so friendly faces, her stepsisters. Ah, uh, brother, or should I say, a sister. <laughs> These two. But the stepsisters didn't even notice her because they were too busy trying to vie for the prince's attention. Oh, by the way, there's the prince. That prince is so handsome. Ooh, Unga, that prince is gonna love my dress. He's totes gonna dance the night away with me. 
No way, Grits. I'm sure he'll notice my breathtaking eyes and ask me to marry him. Meanwhile, Cinderella was doing her own thing and having so much fun at the ball. Then I told him, that's not a squirrel, it's a hamburger. <laughs> Oh, Princey, you look hungry. Let me fetch you a treat. No, I will. Ugh. Cinderella was totally enjoying her night out and away from the barn that she kind of forgot there was a prince at all. Hey guys, who wants milkshakes? Cinderella, you are so much fun. Cinderella, guys, I don't want my stepsisters to overhear that I'm Cinderella. Please, um, please call me Sandy. Sandyrella, yep, that's me. <laughs> Whew, that was a close one. Why haven't we seen you around the kingdom before? Oh, uh, you know, I've just been, um, you guys, oh no, I don't want the people to know I live in a barn and I'm basically a servant. Oh, what were fairies rules again? Oh yeah, common interests. Cheese puffs, don't you guys love cheese puffs? Oh, cheese puffs. cheesy, oh, yes. Those are amazing. Oh, I love yes. them so much, they're so good. Phew, that was close. So Cinderella got back to the party, but she also started getting a bit sleepy. Woo! I am pooped, but I can't stop now. <laughs> Who knows when there'll be another royal ball. <laughs> I'm sure I still got time. But the whole evening, the prince had been noticing the mystery girl, Cinderella, or <clears throat> Sandyrella, <laughs> and how happy she looked, and how she was being nice to everyone, and ate tons of cake without a care in the world. Whoa, she is a seriously cool chica. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, excuse me. Oh, I'm kind of a klutz. Oh, no, no, it was my mistake. Here, let me help you out. Aw, oh, that's so sweet. So, uh, this is some party. Oh, this old thing? Yeah, my mom goes kind of crazy. Yeah, my dad's kind of crazy, too. He was kidnapped by pirates. Yard. Pirates? Whoa. Yeah, pirates. Do you, you want to dance? dance? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh wait, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh, oh my oh, gosh. gosh. I like your crown. Thanks. I like your dress. Yeah. Blue's my favorite color. No way. Mine too. Ooh, common interest. Bonus. So next week, uh, we're having this mini golf tournament here at the palace. Do you think you want to come? That sounds awesome. Cinderella had wondered how she would sneak away from her stepmother and stepsisters and come back to hang out with the prince, but whatever, she would figure it out. So it's a date, uh, I, I mean. But Cinderella didn't hear the prince because the music had gotten louder and she was feeling the beat. So loud, in fact, that she didn't hear her alarm on her phone ringing. Uh-oh, she better watch out. Let's keep reading. Chapter seven, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. What's that noise? Huh? I said, what's that noise? Oh, it's just my phone. <laughs> oh no, my phone. I gotta go. Wait up, I didn't get your name. Oh no, oh no, 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 no. Oh, oh no. Oh no. Wait up. Oh no. It was nice knowing you, beautiful glass slipper, but I gotta go. Wait, you left your shoe. Keep it. Huh? <sighs> At least the carriage is still... <sighs> Great. And so with one shoe, Cinderella walked all the way home, all 48 miles, which took exactly 864 minutes. She wasn't too sad though. I mean, guys, <laughs> The prince danced with me a ton, and I made so many friends, and I did a conga line, and the limbo, and the robot, <gasps> and I must have had like five pieces of cake. <laughs> it was the best night of my whole life. <gasps> That's amazing. That happiness lasted all through the next morning, even though her stepsisters were being particularly annoying. The prince is going to ask me on a date. No way. He's going to ask me. 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 Well, we'll see who he putts with at the Royal Mini Golf Tournament. The Royal Mini Golf Tournament? I almost forgot. And wait, Gritzel and Oonga got invited? Oh, boy. Mini Golf Tournament, huh? Don't worry about it, Cinderella. You're not allowed to go. Why not? Mom, tell Cinderella she can't go to the Royal Mini Golf Tournament. Cinderella, you most certainly cannot go to the Royal Mini Golf Tournament. 
Ugh, I hope that girl from last night doesn't go. She was the worst. Wow, that is so mean. What girl? This girl Sandy or something. She hugged the prince for like a whole hour. So annoying. Gee, <laughs> yeah, I hope she doesn't show up. Cinderella decided she'd better practice her golf swing before the big tournament. Oh, you better believe I'm going. <laughs> I don't know how, but I'm going. Fairy godmother better come through for a sister. I'm gonna need some new duds. <laughs> what do you think, Sir Bonkers? How's my swing? <sighs> I guess I need to keep practicing. <laughs> Finally, the big day had arrived. Time to putt. <laughs> Cinderella waited for her fairy godmother to arrive. I wonder what kind of outfit I'm gonna get today. Oof, and I hope I get a new pair of shoes. <laughs> I love these glass slippers, but I can't golf in just one shoe. <laughs> I probably need sneakers anyway. Where is she? There she is. Ew. Mom says you have to go with us to the mini golf tournament. Yay, I'm so happy. Yes. <laughs> okay, um, can I borrow a dress or something? I mean, I can't go looking like this. <laughs> You shouldn't go anywhere looking like that. But no, you can't borrow a dress. Unga, please. Cinderella, ugh. No one cares what you look like. We just need you to, like, hold our bags and get us drinks and stuff. Oh. So, like, hurry up. Guys, the prince can't see me like this. All right, fairy godmother. <laughs> It'd be super great if you could show up about now. Uh, okay. Fine, I'll just go to the prince's palace wearing rags. <laughs> no big deal or anything. <sighs> eh? <laughs> what do you think will happen next? Let's keep reading. Chapter eight, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. There she is. The big day of the royal mini golf tournament had finally arrived and Cinderella was there. Awesome, right? Not so awesome. My fairy godmother didn't show up. And look at me, I'm wearing rags at the palace. You know where the prince lives? <sighs> That's so sad. Meanwhile, my stepsisters are playing miniature golf with said prince. Can my life get any worse? Heads up. Ow, oh, I guess it can. So yeah, Cinderella was pretty bummed. And so was the prince. He had really been looking forward to his mystery girl showing up. Why are you carrying around a shoe? Long story. And why do you keep gazing off into the distance? No reason. Hey, Prince, watch me putt. Huh? Oh yeah, that's great. I didn't even swing the club yet, ugh. Sorry, hey, Pretzel. It's Gritzel. Do you know the girl I was dancing with the other night? Nah. -uh. Do you know her? What girl? I didn't see a girl. I have to find her. I must see her again. Oops. Heads up! Hey, do I know you? Eek! The prince! What do I do? Play it cool, Cinderella. Play it cool. Uh, no, not me, mate. You must have me confused with someone else. Uh, right? <laughs> yeah. What? Okay, gotta go! That couldn't have been. Or could it? Woo! That was a close one. Great. Just great! I blew it! Uh, Cinderella had really, really, really wanted to talk to the prince, but she panicked. She was sure the prince would just see her in rags and reject her. I mean, princes like princesses, right? Right? So that settles it. I cannot let him know that this is the real me. Hey, Cinderella! Oh, what? Uh, who's that? <laughs> Cinder who? <laughs> oh, hey, Mr. Beeswax. You got news about my dad? We're getting real close to cracking the case, kid. I got one of my best guys following a pirate ship as we speak. That is amazing. That's great. Uh, what are you doing here? Official palace business. I can't discuss it. But between you and me, the prince has got a crush. Oh, yeah. I mean, sure. <laughs> Whatever. That's cool. <laughs> Who is it? That's classified, kid. But get this. He doesn't know her name. Go on. Says she showed up at the ball and then she just ran off. Go figure, he thought she'd be here today. But when she didn't show, he called me. 
So, like, what did he say about this girl? I can't really discuss it because I'm a private eye, the keyword being private, but he says she's super cool. Yeah. And really funny. Yeah. And a fabulous dancer. She sounds great. <laughs> yeah, but she said she'd be here and she didn't show. Kind of rude if you ask me. Oh, I'm sure she has a really good reason. <laughs> we'll see. The prince is a good fella. Hate to see him get his heart broken. Well, gotta get back to work. She could be anywhere. She could be right under my nose. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> well, the good news is the prince obviously totally likes me. Woohoo! <laughs> oh, so cute. The bad news is I have absolutely no idea what to do. Several days passed and Cinderella had not heard any news about the prince and his mystery girl. She tried to come up with a plan. Maybe I, no. Well, what if I, no, that won't work. Oh, I got it. I could, uh, no. Cinderella, I need a pedicure. Right now? Yes, now. Me too. Haven't you heard? The prince is going around to every house in the queendom to find his dream girl. Say what now? He has the shoe, and supposedly he's going to marry whoever fits into it. So like, our feet need to look good. Yeah, we need prince-worthy tootsies. The prince is coming here? <laughs> yeah. And one of us is going to become a princess. Yeah. Me. No way. Me. 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 This Me. is going to be interesting. Me. 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 Those stepsisters are so mean. Let's keep reading. Chapter nine, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Cinderella was so nervous. The prince was coming to her house. Oh man, fairy godmother, if there was ever a time when you need to help a sister out, it's now. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? She tried rubbing a lamp. What? It worked for Aladdin. <laughs> that was so funny. She tried wishing on a falling star. No stars, shoot. And finally, Cinderella tried to conjure her fairy godmother with a magical spell. Flippity, floppity, blob, blurpity, black, madgages, fairieth, godmothereth, cometh now. She's here, yay. Hello, official royal business, open up. Oh no, the prince is here. Let me try on that shoe. Me first. No, me. One at a time, ladies. One at a time. Hi, Princey. Remember me? Sure, yeah. Hi, Pretzel. It's Pretzel. Huh? Looks like it doesn't fit. Sure it does. Perfect. I've never worn such a comfortably fitted shoe. <laughs> Take that, bad guy. <laughs> And there are no other ladies in the house? No. Nada. No siree, Bob. Wait a second. Doesn't Cinderella live here? Cinder who? Never heard of her. There's another girl here? Please, fetch her at once. Your Highness, the other girl was not at the ball. I can promise you that. She lives in a barn. She's totally yuck. Nah, she's a lovely girl. I'll get her for you, Prince. Hey, Cindy. Hey, Mr. Beeswax. The Prince wants you to try on a shoe. He's still after that mystery girl. Oh, I can't go out there. I know you weren't at the ball, but it'll just take a minute and it'll make the prince happy. No, like, I really can't go out there. I'm a mess, beeswax. <gasps> what Unga said is true. I'm totally yuck. <laughs> what? You're a cutie. Come on. Okay. Now I really, really, really wish I had my fairy godmother. <gasps> Nothing? Come on! Hey, you look awfully familiar. Yeah? <laughs> I'm um, uh, supposed to try on a shoe? Try not to stick it up. Well, what do you know? It fits! It's you! Yay, I'm so happy! OMG! No way! Your Highness, I assure you, she was not at the ball! Well, actually, I was. <laughs> Super long story, but I really wanted to go and you wouldn't let me. But then my fairy godmother showed up and oh yeah, apparently I have a fairy godmother. <laughs> anyway, she showed up, waved around her magic wand and I got a dress and shoes, these shoes. Well, the other one's in the barn, but <laughs> anywho, then I went to the ball and I met the prince. <laughs> no big deal. <laughs> fairy godmother? There's no such thing as a fairy godmother. Sorry I'm late, Cinderella, but your fairy godmother is at your service. 
the fairy godmother. Let's keep reading. Chapter 10, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Where were you? I needed you. I'm so, so, so sorry, honey. I've been at a fairy magic conference and these trolls crashed the party and it was just a huge old mess. Anyway, what's up? Oh, that's the prince over there. <gasps> oh, he's cute. Uh, yeah, yeah, look at me. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm a mess, but they made me try on the shoe and of course it fit. <laughs> well, that sounds like a good thing. But now he knows I'm not a princess. This is terrible. <laughs> Cinderella, can you tell us what's going on, please? Yeah. Oh, uh, well, um, this is my fairy godmother. Um, fairy godmother, this is everyone. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hi. How you doing? Hello. And now, with a wave of my magic wand, I will transform raggedy ragamuffin Cinderella here into a beautiful princess. Finally. <laughs> Wait. Huh? You don't have to change a thing. Cinderella, I like you for you. Aw, that is so nice. You do? Ew! You don't need a fancy dress or shoes or... Um, hold up. Uh, that's really nice and everything, but if my fairy godmother wants to hook me up with some new duds, then I'm a letter. <laughs> oh, right. Fair enough. Okay, fairy godmother, work your magic. Bloopity blabadoo! I'll grab the other shoe later. <laughs> now me. No, my turn. Sorry, girls. A fairy godmother can only have one fairy goddaughter. No, no fair. fair. They'll get over it. <laughs> so it was you the whole time, huh? Right under my nose. Oh, don't worry. You're still my favorite private investigator. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. With all the shoe trying on, hubbub, I forgot to tell you. We found your dad. You did? That is amazing. Yeah, my guy called me this morning. He's on the ship, a pirate crusty beard. Well, what are we standing around here for? Let's go rescue Cinderella's dad from the pirates. Arg! what are you doing on my ship? We're here to save my dad, you crusty old pirate. Well, you don't have to be rude. Oh, sorry. <laughs> my girl. Dad! Who are you guys? Harvey Beeswax, private eye. I'm her fairy godmother. I'm the prince, and may I just say, I like your daughter, sir. Long story. <laughs> no time for stories. It's time for you to walk the plank. Ah, pirates! I almost forgot. <laughs> Allow me. Zippity, zamaboo, ta-ta, and bye-bye. Yay! Yay, magic to the rescue. Okay. Let's pause for a second, because you're probably thinking this day couldn't get any better, right? I mean, the prince found me, my fairy godmother finally showed up and gave me some new princessy clothes, and now my dad had been rescued from the pirates. Talk about a good day. <laughs> but then it got even better. Get this, when we got home, Beeswax put my evil stepmother in the slammer. Turns out she hired the pirates to take my dad. So evil, right? Anyway, it was pretty much everybody lives happily ever after fairy tale kind of stuff. <laughs> oh, and we decided to let my stepsisters stick around, but they were a lot nicer now that I was a close personal friend of the prince. <laughs> they even started doing their share of the chores. Wow, that was so much fun. I just love happy endings. Hi kids, welcome to Storytime at Cool School with me, Miss Booksy. Today we're reading Sleeping Beauty. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Once upon a time in an enchanted land far, far away, there lived a king and a queen. One day, after many, many years of hoping for a baby, the king and queen had a little baby girl, a princess named Briar Rose. Everyone in the land was so excited about the new baby princess, especially the fairies. You see, fairies love babies. Aw, that's so sweet. So the fairies all got together to plan a party to celebrate Little Briar Rose. Fairies also love parties. <laughs> Ooh, I love the streamers, Twinkles. Thanks, boss. And Sparkle, those cupcakes look scrumptious. Buttercup, how is the music coming? Great, I've almost got the speakers set up. Speakers work. Excellent. Everything was shaping up for a wonderful party. Well, all except for one teeny tiny detail that everyone overlooked, no one had invited Grimsley. Grimsley was not like the other fairies. The other fairies liked to flit and flutter about, singing sweet songs and sprinkling pixie glitter on everything. 
And Grimsley, well, Grimsley liked to do sort of mischievous things like gluing fairies' wings together. We're stuck! And filling the pixie glitter jars with dirt. And she absolutely loved to put curses on the other fairies. Curse you! I turn you into a frog! Hey! Wow, that is so mean. Grimsley just wasn't very nice. Maybe that's why it never occurred to any of the other fairies to invite her. Anyway, the party started out like any other fairy party. It was lots of fun and everyone was happy until... What? I just came to bring a present for the baby. Oh, how lovely. Thank you. The king and queen opened Grimsley's present, but they were confused. What is this? A spindle? Briar Rose is far too young to play with a spindle. See kids, a spindle is a sharp, pointy thing used to make yarn. So not exactly a good gift for a baby. But then Grimsley said, You didn't read the card. It explains the curse. A curse? Oh no. This is gibberish. It says here that when Briar Rose turns 16, she'll prick her finger on a spindle and fall into a hundred years sleep. The only thing that will wake her is true love. And good luck with that. Hard to find love when you're napping. What did she say? She just put a curse on Briar Rose. A purse? A curse. Oh no, curses are bad. That's right kids, curses are bad, especially when they're from an angry fairy. Grimsley flew away, but the damage was done. Everyone was majorly bummed out. The next day, the king and queen banned Grimsley from the kingdom and ordered that all spindles be thrown away. This is a no spindle zone, no spindles. And it remained a no spindle zone for exactly 16 years. And then one day, a nearly grown up Briar Rose went exploring around the castle. <laughs> know about this. What you doing? I'm spinning. <laughs> really? This is how I spin. Whoa. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> Makes me dizzy though. <laughs> I'm spinning yarn. Then I'll make you a pretty dress. Oh, that's so nice of you. Hey, I've never seen you around here before. Are you new? I've been around for years, but no one visits me much. Oh, well, now that I know you're here, I'll come and visit you every day. <laughs> hey, could I try? Ooh, I poked myself. Ugh, it's not too bad though. It only hurts a little bit. Too bad. She was actually kind of sweet. Oh well. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. What? No! That can't be. Briar Rose had fallen into a deep sleep. Oh no, just like the curse said she would. When she didn't show up for dinner, the king and queen began to worry. Everyone went looking for her. Briar Rose! Briar Rose, where are you? When they found her sleeping, the spindle beside her, they all knew that Grimsley was to blame. The king and queen were so upset, but Grand Fairy, the oldest and wisest of all the fairies, had an idea. I can cast a spell that will make everyone in the castle fall asleep and only wake when the princess wakes. Then it will be as if no time has passed at all. The king and queen agreed to it. Grand Fairy summoned all the magic she could, and with a wave of her fairy wand, everyone fell asleep. Yay, magic to the rescue. Let's keep reading. Chapter two, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Yep, still sleeping. And they slept and slept and slept. Nothing could wake them up. Over the years, the trees grew around the castle like a jungle, and eventually people kind of just forgot that it had ever even existed. But inside the castle, Briar Rose looked exactly as she did the day she fell asleep. Luckily, Grimsley hadn't cursed her dreams, and Briar Rose had plenty of sweet dreams. One time, she dreamed she lived in a land of puppies, just puppies everywhere for as far as the eye could see. Oh, so cute. Puppies! <laughs> and then another time, the puppies were replaced by kittens. <gasps> kittens! <laughs> Actually, there were lots of dreams like that. Puppies, kittens, ponies, unicorns, hamsters, unicorn hamsters. Pretty much anything cute slash awesome and Briar Rose dreamt about it. But Briar Rose's favorite dream was the one with the prince. Ah, the prince. The prince dream always started the same. Briar Rose would wake up bright and early, 
Then I would walk into the garden where all the birds and woodland creatures would come out to greet me. Hi, Briar Rose. Briar Rose is here. We love you, Briar Rose. I would do the usual dream stuff, like dance around and sing with the animals. But then a handsome prince arrives on horseback. That prince is so handsome. He is, of course, smitten with me and declares he is in love with me at first sight. Oh, princess, I'm in love with you at first sight. Marry me. I can't live without you. I hop onto his horse and we fly around. What? It's a dream. Horses fly in my dream. <laughs> anyway, then he whisks me away to his kingdom and we live happily ever after. <sighs> it's my favorite dream. But it was just that, a dream. Oddly enough, there was a prince from a nearby kingdom who looked a lot like the prince in Briar Rose's dream. His name was Prince John. Prince John and his brother Peter grew up hearing the legend of the sleeping princess and the true love that would save her. Everyone said her castle was somewhere deep in the woods, but no one had been able to find it. No way. I've been all through those woods. That's all just fairy tale stuff. You don't know for sure. It could be true. Yeah, right. Next you're gonna tell me the fairies are real. But remember kids, fairies are real, and they were on the lookout for a prince who might be Briar Rose's one true love. Ooh, this is so exciting! He seems like a nice boy. He doesn't even believe in fairies. No, not that one. The other one. The one who looks all dreamy-eyed whenever anyone mentions the princess. Oh, that one. Yes, he does seem nice. We have to lead him to the castle. Then he'll find Briar Rose, and somehow they'll fall in love. Haven't figured that part out yet. Maybe we could just sprinkle him with some pixie glitter. Ha Did you hear something? Huh? Gazoontite. Could have sworn I heard a tiny sneeze. Heh, <laughs> it was probably the fairies. Oh look, he's handsome too. Let's go tell Grand Fairy and Sparkle that we found the perfect prince. Twinkles and Buttercup flew back towards the castle, excited to tell the other good fairies that they had found a prince for Briar Rose. But they were suddenly stopped in their tracks. Uh, watch out! Hello, Stinkle, Butterpoop. What's up? It's Twinkles! And Buttercup! What are you doing here, Grimsley? You were banned! Yes, but the king and queen who banned me are fast asleep. What are they gonna do? Snore me to death? Well, they're gonna be awake soon because we found a charming young prince to come break the curse. Yeah, we're gonna tell Grand Fairy and Sparkle right now! You are, huh? It'd be a shame if you couldn't do that. What do you mean? What's the matter? Mean Fairy got your tongue? <laughs> okay, have fun with that. See ya! And I will see ya. Because there is no way I'm going to let you break my curse and spoil all my fun! Ooh, I didn't see that coming. Let's keep reading. Chapter 3, here we go! Wiggle, snap, story time! First, let's check on Briar Rose. Still sleeping. Buttercup and Twinkles thought that they had discovered the perfect match for Briar Rose when they found Prince John. But after Grimsley's curse, they couldn't speak. So how were they going to tell Grand Fairy and Sparkles? What would you do if you were there? Oh, I love charades! A bird! A plane! Superman? I think they're trying to say that a bird attacked them. Why don't you just write it down? None of us know how to read or write. Oh, right. They don't teach that at fairy school. How about drawing? Can you guys draw out what you're trying to say? Grimsley casting a spell and they can't Talk! Oh! Grimsley cursed you and took your voices! But why? Because they fell in love with a prince! Huh? Oh, oh! I know! They found a prince to break the spell! And then Grimsley must have found out and cursed them so they couldn't tell anyone! Now tell us how to find that prince! Buttercup and Twinkles drew out directions on how to get to the prince's castle, and Grand Fairy and Sparkle set out to find him! Yay! I'm so happy! Let's check on Briar Rose again and see how things are going with her. Still snoozing away. <laughs> Let's see what she's dreaming about. Ah, it's the one about the prince. Really looks like true love, doesn't it? But wait, what's that? It's 
the bad fairy Grimsley. Oh no, that's not good. We only want Briar Rose to have sweet dreams. Well, let's get back to the story. When Grand Fairy and Sparkle got to the castle, they scooped it out detective style. Got him! Let's go! Remember, try not to scare him. Got it! Hi! Yeah. Oh no! He's out cold. Oof, that's gotta hurt. Hey, just like Briar Rose. She's sleeping, he's sleeping. Mash me to heaven. Hello, Prince, wake up. Oh, Prince. Here, allow me. Hey, wake up! Uh. Don't be scared. We're fairies, and we've come to tell you about your true love. Huh? But what the good fairies didn't know, boys and girls, is that they were talking to the wrong prince, Prince Peter. Ugh. The right prince, Prince John, was far away. See, Grimsley had beaten Good Fairy and Sparkle to the castle and captured Prince John. That's right, kids. Grimsley would stop at nothing to foil the Good Fairy's effort to break her spell. What? No, that can't be. Where am I? You're in the Enchanted Kingdom, the land of magic and fairies. And who are you? I'm Grimsley, the greatest fairy of them all. Oh, very impressive. And why am I tied up? Well, I may as well tell you. You are supposed to fall in love with a princess named Briar Rose, a.k.a. Sleeping Beauty. I am? Yes, but she's cursed to sleep for 100 years, and I can't have you going to break the curse. Wait, are you talking about THE Sleeping Beauty? I knew she was real. But wait, why don't you want me to break the curse? I don't want you to break the curse because I'm the one who cursed her. But why did you curse her? Because I'm a bad fairy and that's what I do. Now zip it before I curse you too. Prince John had so many more questions, but he decided he'd better do as Grimsley said and zip it. He soon fell asleep and had a dream, a very sweet dream about a lovely princess. Oh no, this doesn't look good. Let's keep reading. Chapter four, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Prince John had fallen asleep and was dreaming of a princess. It was just a dream, but it felt so real. So real that when he woke up, he was very disappointed to find that he was still tied up at Grimsley's. The good news was the bad fairy was nowhere to be seen. Prince John knew that this was his chance. I have to escape. <clears throat> huh, that was easy. Yeah, fun fact. Fairies are terrible at tying knots. That's why they never wear shoes with any laces. Oh, now I get it. Once he was untied, Prince John hightailed it out of there, but he quickly found out he had no idea where he was or where he should go. Meanwhile, Briar was still in her deep sleep, dreaming a sweet dream about her prince. Ah, her dashing prince. But then something weird happened. Her prince suddenly changed into someone else. Another prince. But this prince was all wrong. He said, No, I don't think this is true love. Sorry. Huh? That part wasn't a dream. You see, Grand Fairy and Sparkle had brought Prince Peter to see Briar Rose. They thought he would take one look at Briar Rose and realize he was madly in love with her. But he just saw a sleeping princess with a little bit of drool on her cheek. They asked him, so, are you in love? And Prince Peter replied, you guessed it. No, I don't think this is true love. Sorry. Are you sure? Yeah, no. Why did you think we'd be in love anyway? She's cursed into a deep sleep, and only her true love can wake her up. We thought that might be you. Whoa, this is the legendary Sleeping Beauty. My brother is always going on and on and on about her. It's like he's in love with her or something. Wait, hold up. You have a brother? Yeah. That must be who Twinkles and Buttercup saw. Where is he? I don't know. I saw him leaving with some little lady. Hey, come to think of it, she had wings just like you guys. Grimsley! We have to go rescue that prince. Let's go! Okay. I guess I'll just see myself out. <laughs> that was so funny. The good fairies set off to find Grimsley's hideout, but they wouldn't find Prince John there. He was wandering the enchanted forest, trying to get to Sleeping Beauty's castle. It must be around here somewhere. 
Prince John was determined to find Briar Rose. He trudged through the mud. He swam through alligator infested waters. He leapt over pits of snakes. Nothing could stop him. That is, until he got to a very large, very tall brick wall covered in vines. Whoa, that is one big wall. Whatever, I'll just climb up the vines. Ow, ow, ooh, ah, ah. You see, the wall was covered in rose vines and prickly thorns, otherwise known as... <gasps> Briars. That's right, kids. Thorny bushes are also known as briars. Prince John wondered if this might be significant. Hey, briars, roses, briar rose. I bet briar rose is on the other side of this wall. And she was. Only trouble was, Prince John would have to climb over the very ouchy wall of thorny briars. But he was determined. The fate of true love kept him going strong. Aw, true love. Ow, ow, ooh, ouch, ooh, ow. About a hundred owls later, and Prince John was at the top of the wall. <gasps> Is this Sleeping Beauty's castle? Wait, what's that noise? That sounds like snoring. This is it. I made it. Woohoo! I'm okay. Time to go break the spell. Looks like we're on our way to a happy ending, kids. But wouldn't you know it, trouble was a Bruin in another part of the enchanted forest. Grand Fairy and Sparkle had just made it to Grimsley's hideout and found a very angry Grimsley. And kids, when fairies get angry, watch out. You, you did this. Did what? Released my prisoner. Oh, you mean Briar Rose is one true love? We did it. It looks like he's on his way to break the spell, doesn't it? Not if I get there first. And Grimsley shot out like a cannon. What do you think she's gonna do? I don't know, but we better stop her. Oh, uh, not again. The good fairies knew that they had to stop Grimsley. It was a race against time, good versus evil, but love must prevail. Whoa, that was scary. Let's keep reading. Chapter five, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Prince John had just made it to the sleeping castle. Now, let's go save the princess. Prince John wandered the castle looking for Briar Rose's room, which as it turns out, wasn't too difficult. Well, that was easy. <gasps> All right. Prince John opened the door. You might imagine something like this happened next. My prince, my one true love. Marry me. Oh, so cute. But what really happened is this. Uh, hey, Briar Rose. Um, I think I'm supposed to wake you up. I mean, I don't mean to sound presumptuous or anything, but I might be your true love. It's destiny or something. Um, I guess I'll wait here until you wake up. I'm sorry. This is really awkward. I'm just going to wait outside. Woo! I'm okay. <laughs> that was so funny. <gasps> what was that? Sorry, uh, I just fell. Briar Rose, you're awake. Who are... <gasps> you're my prince from the dreams. Huh? You dreamed of me? Yeah. Wait, am I awake or is this another dream? Oh, please, please, pretty, please tell me I'm really awake. You're really awake. And she was. Sleeping Beauty was no longer sleeping. Her true love had awakened her by being clumsy and noisy. How romantic. Yay, I'm so happy. Woohoo! <laughs> Wait, what year is it? How long was I out for? Did you hear me snoring? Oh gosh, do I have drool on my face? Please tell me I don't have drool on my face. All good. Thank goodness. <laughs> so, you broke the spell, huh? <laughs> yes, I'm apparently your one true love. I mean, if it's okay with you. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I already know everything about you. This is so weird, <laughs> but cool. But just as the two lovebirds were getting to know each other, they heard a very odd noise. What is that? It sounds like an airplane. Okay, but what is that? Oh, <laughs> I, I guess those were invented after you were cursed. It's a thing you can fly around in. Oh, what? Cool. Wait, how long was I asleep? Like, almost a full hundred years. Wow, that is so cool. 
so I'm really like over a hundred years old. <laughs> Is my hair gray? No, it's brown. Um, <laughs> I think we should be more focused on that noise because it sounds like it's coming right this way. I'm okay. Oh, hello, Briar Rose. You're up. Who are you? It's the bad fairy. We have to run. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, my legs are asleep. I can't move. Uh, watch out. I am Grimsley, the greatest fairy of evil, and I curse you. But before she could finish her curse, Briar Rose said, Pull me out of here! <laughs> hey, where'd they go? Once they got out of the castle, Briar Rose tried to wake up the rest of her body. Better? Yeah, I think so. Okay, good. Because <laughs> it's time to run! Where are we gonna go? I don't know! But wherever they ran, Grimsley was going to follow. And she was working up her worst curse yet. A curse? Oh no. Let's keep reading. Chapter six, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Briar Rose and Prince John were on the run from the bad fairy Grimsley. Only problem was they didn't know where to go. So they kind of just ran around freaking out. <laughs> Meanwhile, since the 100 years of sleeping spell had been broken, the rest of the castle was waking up. We're awake. Hurrah! But the hurrahs stopped when they found that Briar Rose was not in her room. Where's the princess? <gasps> the princess is missing. That's when, rather conveniently, the good fairies arrived. Grand Fairy and Sparkle were exhausted from flying all over, trying to undo Grimsley's mischief. But they had a job to do, and good fairies never give up. Aw, that is so nice. So, we have some good news and some bad news. Good news is the spell has been broken! Yay! But the bad news... What are they doing? Oh, Grimsley cursed them and took their voices! They're trying to tell you the bad news! Which is that Grimsley is planning another curse! And we're not sure what she's gonna do! But it's probably very, very, very bad! Oh no! She must have taken Briar Rose! Don't worry, we'll find her! Let's go, gang! Back in the forest, Briar Rose and Prince John had found what they thought was a great hiding spot. Let's just hang out here for a bit and maybe Grimsley will just give up and leave. But that proved to be wishful thinking because guess who showed up? Oh no, run! Hey guys, what's up? Are we playing hide and seek? Grimsley! <laughs> yep, Grimsley had found them. Not good. Hmm, let's see. What sort of evil spell should I cast? I could turn you into frogs. That's always fun. Oh, or how about I turn Briar Rose into a frog and Prince John into a fly? And then Briar the frog will eat John the fly. <laughs> what do you say? Uh, no thanks. Oh, I could turn you into donkeys. Half people, half horse. Maybe turn you into statues? Oh, I know. I won't turn you into anything at all. You won't? No. I'll turn myself into... A dragon? Ah, this is scary. What are we gonna do? Uh, I don't know, run? Okay, maybe not. Fortunately, help was on the way. The good fairies were flying at top speed on the hunt for Grimsley, ready to stop her in her evil tracks. Uh oh! Uh, what's our plan again? Find Grimsley and trap her in this bag. Yeah, I think we'll need a bigger bag. I have an idea. Follow me. The good fairies flew right at Grimsley's face. You know, the one that was breathing fire at everyone? Usually not a good idea, but... Pixie Glitter, now! Hey, get out of here! I can't see! Ow! I burned myself! Well, maybe you should stop breathing fire! Never! Ow! Ha! You're in trouble, villain! Give it up, Grimsley! Yeah, Prince John and Briar Rose have true love. They broke the spell. Yeah, love wins. This was like a poison to Grimsley. Bad fairies do not like love. Ugh, gross. Don't invite me to the wedding. Don't worry, you're not going anywhere. Except fairy jail. 
Is that a thing? We'll figure it out. The important thing was that the day was saved. Grimsley was defeated and forced to undo all her evil spells. Twinkles and Buttercup got their voices back and the Enchanted Kingdom was awake and happy. Normally, we'd say that this was a happy ending, but since Briar Rose and John only just met, let's call this one a happy beginning. That was such a great ending. Thanks for coming to Storytime. See you next time. Bye. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Storytime with me, Miss Booksy. Today, we're reading The Three Little Pigs. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Hi guys, it's me, Little Red, and I'm here to... I thought you said we're reading The Three Little Pigs. Yes, I know, but we have our special friend, Little Red, helping us tell the story. Okay, let's get back to it. So as I was saying, I'm Little Red, and I have such an epic story to tell you guys. There once was a family of pigs. Family meeting. Coming, Coming Mom. Mom. But first, mud milkshakes? Yeah. Yes! And I want chocolate. Please, can I have the mint chip? And I'll have a worm and crickets milkshake. Gross! Gross! What? I'm unique, okay? Okay, piggies. We wanted to talk to you guys today because we are so happy that you are growing into big, strong pigs. And we have loved the past 32 years of raising you and having you live in our house and doing your laundry and you not paying rent. But we feel the time. You gotta move out. <gasps> what? No, that can't be. Okay, we knew you wouldn't like this, but I didn't think you would take it this hard. Sorry, you're all grown up now. Bye. Harsh. You'll need to get jobs so you can pay for supplies to build your own houses. When I was your age, I had to walk 52 miles in the snow to my first job. Dad, we already heard this story a million times. Well, it's going to be hard work for you guys, but we believe in you. My little piggies are all grown up. Don't worry, Mom. We got this. Secret sibling cheer? One pig, two pig, three pigs a dollar. All for the family. Stand up and holler. Aw, that's so sweet. And just when the three little pigs were amping themselves up to go out and look for jobs, there was a knock on the door. Who are you? Hey, don't be rude. Hello, who might you be, girl covered in red? I'm Little Red. Hmm, makes sense. I was wandering through these woods to get to my grandma's house. See, she's sick with a cold and I wanted to go cheer her up. This story sounds so familiar, like a fairy tale my grandma read me when I was a little piglet. Anyways, I'm super exhausted and kind of just bored from walking around so long, so do you think I could chill with you guys for a bit? Well, we were just gonna go to downtown. We're getting jobs and moving on up. You could come with us. That sounds like an adventure. I'm sure Grandma will be fine for a little while longer. <laughs> Yay! Yay! But before you go, would you like a slug shake? Um, I'm afraid to ask what that is, so no thank you. <laughs> that was so funny. So Little Red and the three pigs went off to the town. They had fun and got to know each other. They played guessing games. Can you guess my favorite color? Hmm, that's easy. Red? Yellow, actually. Can you guess my favorite snack? Bacon. <gasps> Just kidding. Sorry. <laughs> Woo, that was a close one. They smelled the flowers. They made new friends. They stopped for a bite to eat. They ran around in circles. They basically did everything except find new jobs. This has been fun and all, guys, but we should really find somewhere that's hiring. But finding a job is so hard. <laughs> If only there was a place that we could go that helped pigs get jobs. If only it was that easy. Um, guys? Kind of like the place that helps pigs and other fairy tale characters get jobs? Yeah, let's go. So what brings you to us, the place that helps pigs and other fairy tale characters get the jobs? Well, isn't it kind of obvious? What kind of jobs do you have available? Oh, many things. Cupcake makers, we need builders, painters, molecular biologists. Huh? We need the gingerbread decorators, truck drivers, teachers, professional nappers. Ooh, I want that one. Oh, I am so sorry, but none of these jobs are available right now. Oh. oh. Well, we need something. Our mom and dad are going to be super mad at us. Well, why don't you tell us what the pigs can do immediately? Yes, I have just the thing. Hey, you look familiar. Who, me? Hmm, that's 
sounds suspicious. Let's keep reading. Chapter two, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. So you were saying that you had just the right jobs for these pigs? Yes, I have just the thing that'll bring home the bacon. What? <gasps> oh, ahem. no offense, just a figure of a speech. Uh-oh, this doesn't sound good. I have the perfect job for you three. There's an opening at the candy factory. Ooh. Oh. You can start the day. Here, sign these papers. What do they say? Don't worry about it. The pigs will have the best jobs in town. Hmm. I hope I can taste test candy. I hope I can swim in a candy pool. I just hope we can make some money soon so we can buy building supplies. You guys are going to do great. So the three pigs went to the first day of their job. Little Red followed along for support. They were nervous and excited. It took the pigs a little getting used to. I mean, they never worked a day in their life. They made mistakes. They were sometimes late. They sometimes said the wrong thing. Yeah, boss, I literally didn't work today. All I did was eat candy. Uh, oops. <laughs> that was hilarious. Sometimes they ate way too many pieces of candy and got belly aches. But after a while, they saved up enough money to build their own houses. So Little Red went with the first pig to the store. So what do you think you need to build a strong house? Hmm, I want something quick because I'd rather be doing anything else besides building. How about this? No way. One drop of rain and the paper will disintegrate. Marshmallows? No. Slime? No. Okay, fine. Straw it is. Oh, I don't think straw is going to be super strong. Too bad. I'm bored. Let's go. <sighs> Hamon. I don't know about this. Oh, did I tell you his name is Hamon? So Little Red helped Hamon build his house of straw. It looked okay, but Little Red knew it probably wasn't a very strong house. Wow! You did it! It looks nice. Uh-oh. You better watch out. Well, let's see how this goes. I am so tired. I need a nap. While Hamon napped, Little Red called her grandma to check on how she was feeling. Hey, Grandma. Sup, girl? How you feeling? Oh, Red, I am so happy to hear your voice. I hope you don't mind, but I might be a little late because I'm helping some friends. Of course. You are such a good friend. You rest and drink some tea, Grandma, and I'll be there soon. Love you. Bye. Suddenly, there was a loud noise coming from outside. It sounded like an engine of some sort. Little Red ran to the window to see what was happening. Oh, little pig! Little pig! It's that interviewer guy. He really looks familiar. The sound of the leaf blower woke Hamon up from his slumber. What? What's happening? Where am I? Is this my house? Yeah, dude. This is your house that you built. Remember? But that guy from the place that helps pigs and other fairy tale characters get jobs is outside. He looks a little mad. We're a little excited. I'm not really sure. Little pig, let me in, let me in. I don't want to let him in. I have morning breath and this place is a mess. Sorry, you can't come in. Yeah, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Like seriously, this thing is hairy. I need to shave before I see anyone. It's like one little hair. Whatever. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down. That is so not cool. That escalated quickly. Why would he do that? My house. I worked so moderately hard on that. What are we going to do? And where did that guy go? But the wolf was nowhere to be found. Come on, let's go to my brother's house. We can crash with him. Oh, man. I really hope he chose something stronger to build his house with. I just knew straw was not a good plan. Chapter three, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. So Little Red and Hamon were running to their brother's house when suddenly they got a call from Mom Pig. Oh, hello, my sweet darling. I miss you so much. How is it going over there? Is everything okay? Eh, yeah, what do I say? I don't want her to know about the whole house getting destroyed, thingy. Just be honest. I'm gonna tell her that I'm just going to visit my brother, Hamilton. It's always better to tell the truth. Um, hi, Mom. Doing great. Out for a jog with Little Red. We're going to see Hamilton now. Oh, how nice. <laughs> I only miss you a tiny bit. Oh, so 
cute. Gotta go, Ma. We're uh, doing some stretches. We're almost there. I can see him right over there. Hamilton was just getting home from work. Hey, dude, we have a big problem. Yeah, the creepy guy from that place blew my entire house down. How could he do that? It seems like he'd need a lot of air. Like, like... <coughs> he had a leaf blower. I don't know what his deal is, but can we crash with you? Well, I haven't actually finished building my house. Yeah, it looks like it needs a bit of work. What did you use to make it? Uh, I just found a bunch of sticks lying around in the forest. Why? What did you do with all your money? I I'm not going to tell you I spent it all on gummy bears and comic books, but... <laughs> that was so funny. You spent all your money on gummy bears and comic books? Let's just fix this thing, okay? We'll help, I guess. If it means we can stay, fine. So the three of them tried to finish the house of sticks. Just like straw, the sticks were not very strong, so they kept having to fix little parts of the broken house. They tried tape, they used glue, they even tried using chewing gum as adhesive. When they were done, the house looked a little crazy. I guess you could call it rustic. Now that we have so much extra time, since we're not doing annoying things like building a house, let's have some fun! Party, party, party! Yeah, let's play games! Ooh, this is so exciting! Let's eat! And my favorite, let's dance! The two pigs and Little Red played and danced and enjoyed themselves until they realized they were almost going to be late for work. Again. <laughs> Uh, that was a good joke, Hamilton. Whoa, guys, we gotta go. Hopefully your sister Porchetta gets there in time too. But what they didn't realize was that Porchetta was already at work. She had been working overtime so that she could save up lots of extra money to build a strong house. So when the others got to the candy factory, they were surprised to see her. Why are you working so hard? There's so many better things to do besides work. Ugh. Yeah, Porchetta, you're being so weird. All you're doing is working and not even having fun. Lame. Well, guys, it's important to do your job well. And it's good to take your time. I don't want to rush my house building. Otherwise, something bad could happen to it. Ooh, that makes sense. Bad? Like, I don't know, maybe the house being blown down or something? What? Nothing. Nothing. All right, all right. Let's just do our job so we can go home. So all the pigs and Little Red worked all day. They taste tested candy. They fixed broken machines. They separated sprinkles by color. They took a lunch break. They helped lift heavy chocolate bars. They took a nap break. At the end of the day, everyone was super tired and super ready to go home. Hamon and Hamilton said their goodbyes to poor Chetta. I'm going to stay and work a little bit more. Whatever. Bye. But while they were at work, the big bad wolf paid a visit to Hamilton's stick house and blew the thing down with a huge fan. What? No, that can't be. And remember, the pigs in Little Red didn't realize it was the big bad wolf yet. What the, what was this dude's deal? Well, the pigs were in for quite a surprise. No, my beautiful, rustic, fragile house. I'll bet it was that guy from the place that helps pigs and other fairy tale characters get jobs. I'm telling you, that guy looked so familiar. I just get a bad feeling around him. Us, Us too. too. What are you going to do now? It's getting dark. I'm totally starving and we have nowhere to sleep. I think you know what you guys have to do. Go find a hot air balloon and fly to Antarctica and change your names forever? No, I think you should apologize for being mean to Porchetta and see if she'll let you stay at her house. Uh, I don't like apologizing. Me neither. Well, sometimes you have to do things you don't want to just because it's the right thing. Uh, you're probably right. Plus, we really need help. This should be interesting. Kids, what do you think is gonna happen next? Let's keep reading. Chapter four, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. So Little Red, Hamon, and Hamilton, with their piggy tails between their legs, went to talk to their sister. When they arrived, they were in for quite a surprise. Oh guys, it looks like her house isn't even done yet. 
Uh, hello, Porchetta. We started building like weeks ago. Oh, uh -huh. what's taking so long? Hi, guys. Well, it takes time if you want to do a good job. Oh, now I get it. Blech! Who would want to do a good job? I just want it to be fast. I mean, maybe we could have tried a little harder on our houses? Hamon, why don't you tell her what happened? Well, basically, our houses are gone. Kaput, zilch, dunzo. What? How? What happened? I don't know. I mean, you'd think straw and sticks would be... You built your houses with straw and sticks? No wonder they fell down. Well, they didn't exactly fall down. The pigs explained to Porchetta the whole story. She was shocked, but also not 100% surprised, because her brothers were known for always taking the easy route. So if you guys learned your lesson... That we should have stayed with mom and dad? No, that it's important to work hard and take your time doing things the right way. Even if it's really, really annoying? Yes, even if it's really annoying. So what are we going to do to make things right? Well, I guess we should say we're sorry, Porchetta, for being rude to you. That's okay, we're family. Let's build this house together and keep that crazy guy out. Aw, that's so sweet. He kind of looks like a wolf. OMG, that's it. He's the big bad wolf. I've dealt with that guy before. Ah, uh, we pigs definitely don't like wolves. Well, we just need to make this house super strong. I've been using bricks, one by one. Oh man, no wonder you have such strong muscles. Yep. And we should set traps, just in case. So they all worked together and really hard to make a house out of bricks. It was difficult, and they had to take little breaks. You guys, I'm sweating over here. Let's have some lemonade. Oh, I forgot I had a bunch of treats in my basket. Let's have a little picnic. Ooh, cranberry scones, my favorite. <sighs> it's so good, but <sighs> I'm sleepy. And so they all took a well-deserved little rest. While they were sleeping, the big bad wolf showed up. He tiptoed past them so they wouldn't wake up. But when he tried to open Porchetta's front door... Ooh, what is that? Yes, my first trap worked. I'll be back. Whew, that was a close one. Good thinking, Hamon. You saved us. Saved by the slime, yeah. What do you think the wolf wanted? Yeah, are we in trouble? There is something fishy going on here. I guess we do need to set some traps, just in case he comes back. So they set up all different kinds of traps to protect them from the wolf. They set up invisible wire. They filled buckets with glue and feathers. They spread out syrup all over the floor to make them stick and not be able to run away. They made that thingy. Well, the whole house is basically ready. Yay! Secret sibling cheer! Let's do it! One pig, two pig, three pigs a dollar. All for the family, stand up and holler! Yeehaw! While the pigs in Little Red were feeling really proud of themselves, Mom and Dad Pig were at home, feeling, well... Oh, 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 I miss my little piglet so much! That's so sad. Darlin, they are 32 years old. It was time for them to move out. But there's so much more I wanted to teach them. They don't even know how to make beef bourguignon yet. That doesn't sound too necessary, but that is your favorite dish. What are we supposed to do now? I guess we could sit on these chairs and stare out the window for the rest of our lives. So yeah, you could say they weren't dealing with the separation too well, but back at the brick house, things were getting interesting. So you just take these two corners and put them together like this. Wow, that was easy. Yeah, we really could have been doing this ourselves for the past, oh, 20 years. Mom and Dad really did a lot for us. It feels good to be on our own. I love learning new things. And next, I'm going to teach you to balance a checkbook. Whoa, now you guys really are grown-up pigs. The pigs in Little Red were so excited about being grown-ups now that they did so many grown-up things. They went food shopping, they paid bills, they even babysat their neighbor's baby piglets. They did a great job. I am so proud of us. But one thing we haven't faced yet, the wolf. Chapter five, here we go. 
Wiggle, snap, story time. So like I said, the pigs in Little Red were doing lots of grown up things. Only problem was they hadn't faced the wolf yet. Was he going to come and try and blow the brick house down? That wolf may come back soon, but we can't wait around forever for bad things to happen. That's true. So what is something really grown up you can do right now? I, I, I really want to visit mom and dad. <clears throat> I mean, we, we should go say hi or, or whatever. I hope they'll be okay. You're right, Hamilton. We'll show them how responsible we'll be in now. Little Red, you coming? Yeah, this I gotta see. <laughs> so they all went for a visit to the pig parents. Luckily, Mom Pig had that classic maternal instinct and must have predicted their return because warm, freshly made chocolate chip cookies were waiting for the pigs when they arrived. Finally, all of my little piglets under one roof again. Oh, how I missed you. While we're here, maybe you guys should be honest with your parents about what happened to your houses? Well, um... Come on, guys. Honesty is the best policy. We were being kind of lazy. And we took the easier road. But it didn't turn out so good. Yeah, we made our houses out of sticks and straw, and then this wolf guy came and blew our houses down. <gasps> Don't worry, they learned their lesson and have been working really hard to make one big strong house. You. Here, we have some pictures of what we've been up to. Oh, so cute. I mean, not everything went according to plan. <laughs> oh yeah, this one time we were cooking soup. And we mistook sugar for salt. So we ended up with this really sweet broccoli soup. I mean, I didn't hate it. It was kind of good. <laughs> we are so proud of you all. You really are growing up and learning how to do things for yourselves. Well, we learned from the best. You guys. Aww. We really should be going. See you all soon. And Little Red, thanks for helping our piglets. You betcha. Bye. See you Bye -bye. later. Love See ya. So Little Red and the pigs headed towards the fairy tale forest to get to their brick house. They were enjoying the stroll when suddenly they almost ran into the white rabbit. Man, what is going on? Now this guy looks really familiar too. I'm late, I'm late, I'm very, very late. Well, don't let us stop you. It looks like you're on a very important mission. I am. And I'm late, but the strangest thing happened just a moment ago. Uh, are you gonna tell us, or what? Oh, right. Well, I was hopping along, minding my own beeswax, when I ran into this big wolf-looking guy. The, the wolf. wolf! The big bad wolf? Oh, no. Right, and he said he was also running late. Yeah? To go see a family of pigs. Ah! And you all look like pigs to me, so I thought I'd just let you know. Thank you, sir. We gotta go. They ran back to their brick house, but luckily when they arrived home, no wolf was in sight. <sighs> oh, looks like we beat him here. Well, all our traps are ready, so let's just wait. Little Red and the pigs waited. And waited. And waited but they were abruptly awoken by the sound of their doorbell. Little pigs, little pigs, let me in. Ah, watch out! Not, Not by the hairs of our chin chin chins. Well, then I'll hop and I'll pop and I'll... Okay, you can come in. Sheesh, finally. Whoa! Sounds like the first thing worked. Pigs, where are you? We're in here. Come find us. When the wolf came through the next door, a big bucket of glue dumped on him from above. Then Hamon tossed a bag of feathers on top of the glue. He kind of looked like a chicken. We don't know why you've been so mean to us and destroyed our houses, but you're not getting this one too. Yeah. Oh, there you are. He started to run towards the pigs, but got stuck on the syrup on the floor trap. What in the world? Ha ha. Gotcha. Now you're gonna tell us what you've been up to, or else. Ooh, this is so exciting. Let's keep reading. Chapter six, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. So the pigs and Little Red had finally caught the wolf. 
he was stuck in a syrup on the floor trap. Sounds sticky, but also kind of yummy. See here, Wolf, you gotta answer some tough questions. Me? Yeah, you. First, where did you get that shirt? It's so cute. Well, it was on sale at... No, stop. We want to know why you're here. Yeah, why did you blow down my house of straw? And why did you blow down my house of sticks? And will you reimburse me for the $4 it took to make it? Hello, I need the cash. And honestly, you really scared me. I have a fear of leaf blowers. And I have a fear of little pieces of wood. Um, aren't sticks basically little pieces of wood? And you built your house out of them? Maybe. Whatever, Little Red. <laughs> that was hilarious. And I'm afraid we are never going to get to the bottom of this if you two goofballs don't hush and let the wolf answer our questions. Right. Okay, Mr. Uh, wolf Guy. My friends call me Fred. Whatever. You destroyed my friends' houses, and you scared us, and you even came back to destroy this house. What gives? Well, uh... Tell us. The truth is, it was all an accident. What? Remember those papers I had you sign when you got the job? Yeah? Well, they're actually the deeds to your unbuilt houses. How dare you? What are deeds again? Well, basically, I had them sign over the houses to me so that I owned them. You lied to us. Sort of. Oh, that's so not cool. Why did you come back here then? Well, I was planning my next heist when I got a special visit from the fairy godmother. Do da, do da, do. Oh, big bad wolf. Ah, what? Who? What are you? Um, you don't know me. I'm pretty famous. You look a little like my grandma, but with wings. Well, I'll have you know, I am the fairy godmother. Okay. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. We need to talk. But I don't like talking to all the people. Pardon me, so rude. And I am only 3,856 years young anyway. You're right, I am sorry. Old people are lovely. I'm just a little bit on edge. Well, you should be, because I know you have been up to no good. Excuse me? I have only been tricking a bunch of innocent and a little bit dense pigs into signing their entire life savings and their houses over to me. What's so bad about that? Wow, that is so mean. Um, are you kidding? You know, now that I say it out loud, it does sound uh, pretty bad. So, well, deep down, you know it's not kind of trick people. But they are not people. They are pigs. You know what I mean. And it's important to not be selfish. And you should think of others. I know, I know. You need to make it right. Go apologize and fix it. So that's basically what happened with the fairy godmother. Wow. And that's why I came to each of your houses to apologize and give you new papers to sign. You promise these are the right papers? That you aren't tricking us again? Yes, of course. These papers will fix everything. One question, though. Why were you always talking about huffing and puffing and... Oh, simple. I have the worst asthma. I'm pretty much always huffing and puffing. And why did you blow our houses down with fans and leaf blowers? I was bringing those to you as a housewarming gift. But I'm not so good with machines, so I lost control. So you blew the houses down by accident? Pretty much. Oh, now I get it. Well, I guess we should also apologize to you, because I think our traps were a little bit mean. Yeah, they didn't make me feel too good. But it does taste good. We are sorry. We just needed to defend ourselves against home invaders. I get it. Well, it sounds like everything is all worked out. I think there's only one thing left to do. What? what? Have a dance party! Yay! Yay! So the new friends danced and danced and danced. Porchetta was actually a really good dancer. Check this out. Little Red, on the other hand, was pretty silly. After all was said and done, they had a great time together. But Little Red realized something. My grandma. Little Red hadn't exactly forgotten about visiting her grandma. After all, she had kept checking on her and knew she was feeling better, but still. Well, I have to get there fast. Anyone have an electric scooter? Those things are awesome. Actually, I can call in a favor. I know a guy. Ooh, sounds interesting. Look out below. Cool. Thanks, guys. See you soon. Bye, Red.
Well, I think it's time for cupcakes. Yay! I just love happy endings. What a great story. Thanks for coming. Bye. Hello, folks, and welcome to Booksy Interviews Bad Guys. <laughs> We've got a great show in store for you today full of fun, intrigue that we know you're going to love. I have a very special guest for you on the show today. You might know him from such stories as The Three Little Pigs, Little Red Riding Hood, The Boy Who Cried Wolf. Yes, you guessed it. He's big. He's bad. The Big Bad Wolf, ladies and gentlemen. Yay! Yes, yes, thank you, thank you. It is I, the Big Bad Wolf. Good to see all of you. Okay, so Mr. Wolf. Oh, may I call you Wolf? Well, my full name is Wolfgang von Puttersteinen, but you can call me Wolf for short. Okay, well, <laughs> thanks for joining us today. I know you have a very busy schedule. Yes, yes, been very busy. Blowing down houses, scaring people, trying to find the candy, dressing up as grandmas. Okay. Uh, thanks for having me. Well, we wanted to give you a chance to clear the air, so to speak. You can try, but no matter what I do, everyone just thinks I'm bad. Aww. Aww, well, for starters, where did you grow up? I grew up in a land far, far away called Furry Forest. Uh, I grew up in a wolf pack. Ooh. We did regular wolfy things, you know, running, hunting, little dancing. Say what? Oops, <laughs> that slipped. I didn't want anyone to know that I am a forest-renowned ballroom dancer. I've got to keep my street cred, you know what I mean? O-M-G. You must show us. Dance break, dance break, dance break, dance break. Okay, if you insist. was incredible! You got some serious moves, bro. Thank you. I sense a dance competition in our future. You, me, this is happening. <laughs> Maybe someday. What do you think, kids? Should me and the Big Bad Wolf do a dance competition? <laughs> Tell us in the comments below. Okay, next. What projects are you working on right now? Well, I've just finished redoing a house over in Porkville. Um, I hate to interrupt, but aren't you usually the one blowing the houses down? Yeah, but I'm trying to be a little nicer. Cool. So tell me, if you're a changed man, <clears throat> I mean wolf, <laughs> then I want you to say three nice things about Little Red Riding Hood. Oh, come on. Ah, just give it a try. Okay, she's very nice visiting her grandma. She bakes yummy cookies, and she's a super duper fast runner. And frankly, I think she'd make a great dinner. Wow, that little red sounds pretty cool. She's all right. So, a little birdie told me that you've been working on a new book, The Art of the Scare, a memoir. Yeah, I've been working on it for quite a while. Lots of stories of me tricking people, scaring animals, eating people. Well, you don't seem that scary to me. Try me. <laughs> Ooh, okay, I'm not scared. I'm not scared. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Now, for a segment where we read comments from our fans. Here we go. Tweedledoo Smith 123 says, Big Bad Wolf, you are so hairy. Hey. I mean, I think your hair is pretty luxurious, if you ask me. This takes a little work, you know. Three brushes. How about one more comment? Fairybird ABC says, The pig said when you were huffing and puffing, your breath smelled like cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, so sorry. We're just about out of time for today. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for being a great guest. No problem, and I look forward to the dance competition. For sure. Hi, kids. Welcome to Storytime at Cool School with me, Miss Booksy. Today, we're reading Little Red Riding Hood. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Hi, I'll take it from here. My name is Bonnie, but everyone calls me Little Red Riding Hood. I have no idea why. <laughs> anyway, my life is pretty cool, almost fairy tale like I live in a house in a small village where everyone is super friendly and nothing bad ever happens. Well, one time the market ran out of chocolate chip cookies and that was a really bad day. <laughs> but other than that, everything is thumbs up all the time. <gasps> That's amazing. <laughs> I'm pretty much friends with everyone I know, but my very best friend of all time is my grandma. <laughs> She's the sweetest, most amazing lady you'll ever meet. We do like everything together. We bake. We travel. We do arts and crafts. 
we go to the movies. And we just hang out. But whatever we do, it's just great to be together. So anyway, let's get into the story. It all started when I got a call. Hello? Hello, Little Red. It's Grandma. Achoo! Gazootite, are you sick? I think so. My head is achy. My belly hurts. I've got chills. And I can't get out of bed. Oh, no. I hope she's OK. No, that's terrible. I'll be right over with soup and juice and medicine and ice cream. Ice cream is essential when you're sick. All righty, I'm all packed up. To grandmother's house we go. I couldn't waste any time, so I decided to take a shortcut through the woods. Even though my mom specifically said to stick to the village roads, and everything was fine. Easy breezy and honky dory, until I started to sneeze. Achoo! 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 Oh no, am I getting sick too? Uh, uh, achoo! Oh. Was that a dog? I'm allergic to dogs. That must be why I'm achoo! sneezing. I better hurry up and get to Grandma's house. So I picked up the pace. Hello. Uh oh, she better watch out. Uh, a talking dog? No, I am a wolf. Oh, oh, I beg your pardon, talking wolf. Wait, a wolf? Too scary. Don't be afraid, I am a nice wolf. Okay. Could there really be such a thing as a nice wolf? I'm not so sure. Uh, uh, achoo! Bless you. Thanks. I think I'm a little bit allergic to you. Oh, no. Well, then I'll leave you. But could you spare a crumb of food for a poor old wolf? I'm hungry. Well, this stuff is for my grandma. She's sick. I'm going to her house now. Is that right? Well, I can't let you do that. <laughs> you, you can't? No, I insist you must pick some flowers first. Oh, pick some flowers? <laughs> yes, it will cheer your grandmother up. Oh, and do you know any jokes? Jokes? A laughter is the best medicine. You absolutely must tell her some jokes. That's not a bad idea. <laughs> I'll bring her some flowers and tell her some hilarious jokes. She'll be better in no time. Say, do you know any jokes? Oh, certainly. What do you call a lost wolf? What? A werewolf. <laughs> <laughs> that was so funny. Uh, how about this one? Knock, knock. Who's there? Werewolf. Werewolf who? Werewolf I find the bathroom. <laughs> how about this one? What did the wolf say when someone stepped on his foot? What? Ow! These are pretty great. Thanks. My pleasure. Oh my, what big teeth you have. Oh, I hadn't noticed. Well, goodbye. And with that, the wolf bounded away into the woods. He seemed nice enough, right? Hmm, I don't know about this. Let's keep reading. Chapter two, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Grandma's gonna love these flowers, but I better get going. It's getting late. So I skipped ahead to Grandma's house. And again, everything was just fine until I <gasps> uh, tripped. Uh, uh, huh? I'm stuck in a trap. But who would set a trap? I've only seen that wolf around here, and he seemed perfectly nice. But what I didn't know at the time, kids, was that wolf was not nice at all. In fact, he was bad. The big bad wolf? Oh, no. In fact, I am so bad that people call me a big, bad wolf. I'm so bad that I do things like huff and paw and blow your house down. So bad that one time I ate a little boy just because he kept crying wolf. And now I've set a trap for Little Red Riding Hood all because I want to get to Grandma's house first. Why, you ask? Well, because I'm going to eat her. Don't act surprised. I told you, I am bad. So, Little Red Riding Hood is probably stuck in their trap somewhere. And look at me. I'm on my way to Grandma's house. Bon appetit. Hello. Grandma, it's me. Ah, watch out. 
Meanwhile, ugh, I'm totally stuck. All right, time to show off my survival skills. Super crucial survival skill number one, yell for help. Help, help, help. Kids, I yelled and yelled, but it didn't seem like anyone was around to hear. What's that saying? If a tree falls in a forest and there's no one around to hear it, does it even make a sound? Well, that's how I felt. Like a sad, lonely tree. Oh, help, help! Hello? Huh? Hello? I'm over here! Where? Here! Keep talking! I'll follow your voice! Oh, well, I've been stuck here for a while, and I was going to my grandma's because I was, I was, but I stopped because there was a wolf, because then I said, so I got some flowers, and then I picked the flowers, I put them in my bag, and I was running, and I was running, and I was so tired, and a little bit hungry, too. And, you know, I feel like I'm kind of sweating. It's a little bit humid today, and, oh, hi, I got stuck in this trap. Can you help me? Of course. There you go. Oh. I'm free. <laughs> Thanks, mister. Name's Big Al, licensed lumberjack. I'm Little Red Riding Hood, pleased to make your acquaintance. You may be wondering what I'm doing in the woods this late. Well, I'm on my way to my grandma's house. See, she's sick. Everything was fine until I got distracted by that old wolf. I think I'm allergic to him. And then I got stuck in this darn trap. You say you saw a wolf? Yeah, a talking wolf. Crazy, right? Did he have a fancy sounding accent? Yeah, he did, actually. How did you know? That wolf is bad news. But he seems so nice. Little Red, if you don't mind, I'd like to walk with you the rest of the way to your grandma's house. You know, that wolf, he might be dangerous. Oh, I'd be most appreciative, Big Al. Aw, that is so nice. So Big Al the Lumberjack walked with me, keeping watch for the wolf. But we didn't see him. And I didn't have any sniffles or sneezes at all, so he must have been far away. <gasps> Look, there's my grandma's house. Thanks for the escort, Big Al. <laughs> no problem. See you around. Grandma, it's me, Little Red. <clears throat> Come on in. Wow, she sounds really sick. Good thing I'm here. <laughs> Grandma? Huh? Huh? <laughs> Hello, Little Red. Need a tissue? Oh no, this doesn't look good. Let's keep reading. Chapter three, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Okay, so that's not my grandma, obviously. It's the big bad wolf, but he's wearing my grandmother's clothes. <laughs> As if that would fool me. Whatever, I'll just play along. What would you do if this happened to you? Wow, Grandma, you look real sick. Yes, I'm quite ill. I mean, just awful. You look dreadful. Terrible. Okay, I get it. Enough. And my, how big your teeth look. I don't remember your teeth looking so ridiculously huge. Oh? I mean, oh? And you're so hairy. I don't remember you being so fuzzy. I should probably give you a nice shave. Let me go fetch a razor. No. I mean, I should lie down. I'm feeling quite queasy. Oh, of course. So I tucked in the big bad wolf. Weird, I know. <laughs> he actually did seem a little ill, though. Went out like a light. But never mind that. I needed to find my grandma. I looked all around the house. Under beds, behind the curtains, inside cupboards, in the basement. Grandma? In the closets, on the roof. Grandma? Everywhere. Where could she be? But then I heard something. Uh, Grandma? I looked everywhere. Where could the sound be coming from? Little Red! I followed the sound of my grandmother's voice all the way to... Help me! Huh? Get me out of here, Red! Oh no, this doesn't look good. Shh! The wolf is sleeping. How did you get inside his belly? He ate me. What? Swallowed me in one gulp. Lucky for me, he doesn't chew his food. That's why he was feeling so queasy. Well, I'm gonna get you out of there, Grandma. Don't you worry. Hurry. Bless you. Thank you. 
So kids, I was really in a pickle. How was I supposed to get my grandmother out of the big bad wolf's belly? I decided to consult an expert, the internet. Uh, I keep trying to get grandma to upgrade. Come on, come on. I'm in a hurry, internet. What's time for this? Yeesh. Finally, okay, here we go. What to do when your grandma gets eaten by a big bad wolf? Hmm, says here I gotta make the wolf throw up. Ew. Gross, or else I'd have to perform surgery to get her out? Ugh, I know, I'll call the veterinarian, of course. Hello, Dr. Veterinarian? I have a bit of an emergency. I need an operation for my uh, pet, wolf. Oh, you don't? Okay, thanks anyway. <sighs> okay, so it turned out the veterinarian had a strict no wolf policy. Okay, Grandma, looks like we're gonna need to do the throw up thing. Yuck. <sighs> oh no, where'd he go? Where'd the big bad wolf take my grandma? <sighs> oh no, run! I ran outside. Grandma! Grandma! I figured the wolf couldn't have gotten very far, so I set off through the woods to find them. But the woods were getting a little dark and extra scary. Uh, but I knew I had to be brave to rescue my grandma from the big bad wolf. Slow down, you're jostling me. Can it, Granny? Mind your manners, young man. I've got to remember to chew next time. What was that? Boy, I wish I had picked a less annoying grandma to eat. Oh. I heard that. Grandma! Ah! Oh, no, not her. Over here, little red. Ow! Jostling. Grandma! Grandma! What do you think is going to happen next? Let's keep reading. Chapter four, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Hello, boys and girls, and welcome back. You know me, of course. I am the big bad wolf. Yes, we all know you're big and bad. whoop de doo That's Little Red's grandma. She's in my belly. Yeah, and it stinks to high heaven in here. Shush, grandma, and quit moving around in there. You're giving me indigestion. You just wait. Little Red will come and save me. She's the smartest little whippersnapper I ever saw. But she has to find me first, and she'll never do that. <laughs> that is so not cool. Check it out. I've got the best video games, a milkshake machine, a foosball, and a super classy waterbed. This is where I hibernate, AKA nap for the entire winter. Wolves don't hibernate. That's for bears. Well, that's not fair. Hibernation is the best. You eat a huge meal, and then you settle down for a long winter's nap. What could be better? Whatever. And you should be glad, Granny. That means you'll be safe in my tummy for a long, long time. So I'd been all over the dark woods looking for the big bad wolf and, of course, my grandma. For a while, I could hear my grandma calling for me, but then I lost track of her. Grandma! 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 See? Nothing. I was so scared. What if I never found her? I was starting to freak out. And when I freak out, the only thing I can do to calm me down is a solo dance party. Wow, this is so fun. Little Red? Celebrating because your grandma's all better? No, not even close. She's gone and I can't find her, Big Al. You were right about the wolf. He's big and he's bad and he ate my grandma. What? Yeah, I know. So I've been looking all over for her and it's like they just disappeared. So, you're dancing? That's what I do to calm down. <laughs> oh, gotcha. Well, let's go find your grandma. You'll help me? Of course. You think I'm gonna stand by while some big bad wolf is terrorizing nice girls and eating their grandmas? It's on. All right, <laughs> let's go kick some big bad wolf tail. <laughs> so, we were off to find the big bad wolf and rescue my grandma. <laughs> A gazillion hours later. 
But the finding part turned out to be really super crazy hard. It seriously was like the big bad wolf had just disappeared into thin air. Oh, where are they? We've looked all over the woods and no sign of them anywhere. Oh, and my nose didn't even tingle once. Huh? Oh, <laughs> I'm allergic to the wolf, so when I'm near him, my nose gets all itchy and sniffly. It's like my spidey sense. I see. And no sniffles? Nope, I'm the perfect picture of health. Unfortunately, <laughs> I feel like we just need a lucky break. I know, right? Well, no use in hanging around here. Yeah, let's go. What? No, that can't be it. That's right, walk away. Nothing to see here. <laughs> what? Is Little Red nearby? Little Red, I'm right here. Come back. It's no use, Granny. <sighs> Just about time for my nap. So keep it down in there, okay? Uh, what? What was that? Nothing. Shh. I knew she'd come back. Little Red, Little Red. Achoo! Big Al, I sneezed. Oh, sorry. Bless you. No, Al, I sneezed. Oh, right. That means... He's right under... Achoo! Nose! Whew, that was a close one. Let's keep reading. Chapter 5. Here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Hey guys! So yeah, I was starting to fear I'd never find the Big Bad Wolf and save my grandma, but then my reliable Big Bad Wolf detector went off. My allergies. Achoo! Achoo! Oh, so he's gotta be here somewhere. But where? Huh? Is he hiding up in the tree branches? Maybe he has a tree house. Tree houses are very cool. Yeah, they are. <laughs> uh, doesn't look like there's anything up there. I don't get it. We've looked all over. To the left, to the right. We've looked up. Hey, we haven't looked down yet. Oh, well, I think that we would have noticed if you're sitting on the ground, Al. <laughs> Maybe he's underneath the ground. Hmm, like a super secret big bad wolf hideout or something. <gasps> I know it sounds crazy, but... Hey, what's that blinking red light? Huh? Uh-oh, they better watch out. Looks like a security camera. In the woods? Ah! Did you hear that? The wolf! Haha! <laughs> We're on to you, wolf. Yeah, watch out! Here we come! Uh, Big Al, how do we get down there? Good question. Wait, I got it. Okay, nope, that don't work. Ha 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 ha! Nice try! Dang! Now how are we gonna get down there? Um, Big Al, look! Hey! Did I do that? Yeah, I mean, it was kind of by accident, but whatever. Let's go! Gotcha! Freeze, Wolfie! Little Red! Thank goodness! Okay, Wolf, it's time to give me back my grandma. Cough her up! Never! Well, I guess Big Al is gonna have to chop her out. Yikes, no way. Whoa, 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 that's not really in my job description. Okay, well, then the Big Bad Wolf is gonna have to throw her up. Ew. Oh, I hate throwing up, it's icky. Well, it's icky being inside here. Do what Little Red says. Ouch, did you just kick me? Yeah, and there's more where that came from too. Ow, cut it out, Granny, or I'll eat Little Red here for dessert. Oh, no, you won't. hi -ya. <laughs> Grandma! Little Red! Yay, I'm so happy! Yuck! Oh, now my breath totally stinks! Ew. Oh, Little Red, I'm so glad you found me. Me too, but my job's not over yet. Big Al, let's tie this wolf up. Tie me up! You're going to jail. No! Pretty happy ending, right? <laughs> we saved Grandma and the Big Bad Wolf was about to go to jail. Uh, Little Red? Yeah, what? He got away! What? How? What? No, that can't be. I don't know. He just up and vanished. Granny, did you see which way he went? Don't ask me. Oh no, the Big Bad Wolf is on the loose again. Oh no, this doesn't look good. Let's keep reading. Chapter six, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. 
So, the Big Bad Wolf had escaped. Just gone! Vamoose! Split like a banana! There must be a secret tunnel or something! Cool! This isn't cool, Big Al. We have to get to the wolf. He's a villain. Come on! A secret hideout with an underground escape tunnel? You gotta admit, that's pretty cool. Not if we can't find the escape tunnel. I mean, do we just poke a book or something and the doorway just opens up? Ah! Hey, you found it! Grandma! It looks just like a water slide. Come on, Big Al, we're going in. Wow, that is so cool. Woohoo! We're coming for you, Grandma! Okay, little red! Ah! Ouch! Ow! Uh, ow! It's dark down here! Where are we? I think we're in the sewer. Like those ninja turtles. That means we must be close to town. We'll just climb out and find the police. They'll be able to help us catch the big bad wolf. Nice try, but no. This is actually a dungeon. <laughs> ah, the big bad wolf! That's right, and you're my prisoners now. Forever! <laughs> you're trapped. You'll never get out. Wow, that is so mean. No way! Let us out! Huh? Ah! A good lumberjack never travels without his tools. Well then, I guess I'll just have to run! Ow! Aw, guess you're just trapped down there forever now, huh? <laughs> Sad. Okay, so now I can finally report that there was a happy ending. We fetched the police and they came for the big bad wolf. Big Al and I got super cool deputy badges and our pictures in the paper. And Grandma got a high-tech security system to keep the big bad wolves out. Hello? It's me, Grandma. Hi, not a big bad wolf or anything. <laughs> Just making sure. Gotta play it safe. And best of all, I got my grandma slash best friend back. <laughs> I went to visit her like every single day. Big Al even came over sometimes. And we would just sit around and laugh about the time the big bad wolf got trapped in his own stinky dungeon. <laughs> and eat ice cream, of course. <laughs> ice cream is essential when you're hanging out with friends. Wow, that was so much fun. Uh, I just love happy endings. Thanks for coming. Bye.